You're listening to the Pillaging Podcast, bringing the tailgate to your boombox. Y'all know what time it is. It's time to leave your feelings at the dock because this is the realest podcast in Raider Nation. Tune in every week wherever podcasts are found. Call in to leave a message to be played on air at 408-909-PJFF. This episode's brought to you by One Nation Fanware. Check them out at OneNationFanware.com. It's time to pillage another podcast. I'm Kenny Stapler. Che, what's cracking? Oh, chillas, chillas, chillas. Crack them crack if you got them. Come on now. You guys got to have one. I hope you've chilled them. You guys have been waiting for us for a long time. Hell yeah. I know those, them beers have to be hella cold. Fuck yeah, dog. But look at this beautiful thing we got here. I'm just going to pour it, and then I'll tell you about it. Pour one out, dog. Yeah. Shout out to uh, Randy Guerrero in the chat. Shout out. Big shout out. Hey, shout out. Shout out to Roland Dubs. Raider Nug. With a lot the- of foam. A lot of foam. Let, let me sit that, that down right now. This is that Oakland United Beer Works. Because, you know, it's all about Oakland Raiders, bro. You know, we're all Oakland Raider fans. Uh, find me under the Oak Tree Hazy IPA. 6.8. This is a new new, new beer company, bro. I, I haven't had one from these guys, so we're about to see what this is all about. New shit. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see what it tastes like. We got a lot of head on that beer. Hey. All right. That's tasty. That's tasty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Just like a, like a hazy shit taste, man. It's got a little bit of that. There's a little bit of bite, but it's mostly mellow, right? Okay. For me, it's mellow. Yeah. There's a lot of, uh, it's like a, a full flavor, right? A mm-hmm. um, little bit of, a um, little bit of citrus on it. Just that, that tingle on the tongue from that, you know, mm-hmm. like if you had like fucking orange or you or eat a little bit of that like peel, you get a little bit of that spice on that, on the back end. That's yeah. what, that's what you're getting there, which makes sense if they had a little bit of a citrus peel in the, in the brew. This is good, man. I like this. Shout out to Oakland United Beer Works, bro. 6.8. You know, it's yeah, a little yeah. crusher. Yeah. Sounds good. V should be crushing. I'm jealous right now. I really want a beer, but I'm trying to, trying, to, trying to stay strict. But at halftime, I'm switching to that Yak Daniels. There you go. There so, you go. All right. All right. Well, I was going to say, man, come on, get a little sip of this. I'll get a sip of it. Yeah. Get a little get sip, a sip of that, of it, bro. Yeah. The can is dope, too, man. Now, <laughs> I know it gets lost. Because of the green screen a little bit, but it's got a lot of cool design on there, man. Find me under the old you tree. see I got a number t- I got number two in the waiting right here. It's sitting on the What are you doing under the old tree? Rack. What are you doing under the <laughs> Oh Pillagers? It's good to be back, man. Hey. I know y'all been hating on us on fucking Twitter. Oh, that is nice. About taking fucking forever. It's sweet. It's kinda of <laughs> sweetness to it. Uh-huh. But uh but we're back. We're back, man. We got some, we got some stuff for you. Should discuss. Uh, let's continue this roll call. Shout out to Great Spikehead. Yeah. He asked, is this going to be a positive pillaging podcast? Because that draft went pretty well. <laughs> that draft went fantastic. Bro. Hey, that was a great draft, man. We just got off of watching a whole benching, a bunch, a whole bunch of highlights. Oh, yeah. Uh, shout out to Raider Nug, who's got his wrench back. Y'all better be uh-huh. be wary. You got the wrench Watch out, bro. Don't Rip. make him bust that fucking wrench out, man. <laughs> Shout out to Unified, Roland Dubs, if I haven't said that already. Moki Cerna in the chat. Good to see you. <coughs> Moki! Um, and hopefully some more, Shout out, bro. more folks start to filter in. Go ahead and smash that like button while you're at it. Excuse me. That, that beer punch is back. <laughs> I like that. I got yeah, that. I got, the, I got the coffee on deck, man. I got wings in the tummy. Yeah. Um, it's been a while since we've been on the air, but we've it's been... It's been a while. We've been living our life out here. Uh, yeah. me, me and Che hit the field for like three and a half hours. My life, my life, my life, my life. There's a human jukebox in there, man. In the sunshine. Hey, if Che wants to sing, it's going to be a good show. It's going to be a good show. <laughs> hey, man, you keep hitting me with words just, you know... <laughs> But there's um, just about every fucking word reminds me of a song. So the NW yeah. Raider was was good. Hey, what's good NW hey, Raider? It's good to have you back in the live. Shout out! It's been a minute. And SJ Raider staying up late. Are you in San Jose? Because it really ain't that late, dog. It's not that it's late. Like dog. Nine o'clock out here. Yeah, yeah. It's nine pretty early actually. Nine o'clock in the crow's nest right now. Despert- despiertas, man. What <laughs> time you got to get up, son? <laughs> Watch out! Watch out! It is getting late. It's, it's that late hour. It's that witching it's, hour. It's the <laughs> that's that's when that's when you know. Be careful. We come out, bro. Cuidado. That's when we come out. La mano peluda is going to get you. He said, what wing flavors, bro? There's that. They want to know what the, the Oh, wings, what's the wing bro? flavors? We had that lemon pepper. We mm-hmm. had that Louisiana rub. We had that garlic parmesan, bro. We had the trifecta popping off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little blue cheese. You know? It's good. It's good. Yeah. You know, none of that uh, None of that boneless bullshit. 
And I had that, okay. I had that mellow yellow, bro. Yeah, you did have that mellow yellow. <laughs> we were talking they about call it me too. Mellow. Yeah, man. And we were, we were, uh, we went out. We did some field work today. Yeah, we were throwing some discs, hucking and chucking. Worked yeah. up an appetite, and we were all about. We were like, we need some soda right about now. Yeah, get that energy back, man. Oh, SJ is uh, Sanjoku. Okay, all right. Well, what's up? It's good to see you. New handle. Shout out to Arthur rolling in here. Eddie Raider. Uh, Tyler Raider, what's good? Hey, it's good to have the gang back. Yeah, um, Bobby's missing tonight. He had a long weekend. He was spotting out of De La Viega for the Am Masters tournament. Yep. Um, all four days, he's been out there on the hill. Mm-hmm. Legs hurt, probably sun dre- drenched, got yep. a headache. He's chilling right now. He's got his feet up. He's probably watching this. Probably got to uh, hit some dabs, bro. Oh, the, yeah, for sure. The homie. For sure. You, so, already, you already know Bobby Wasabi's. Yeah. Shout out to what? Sam. There are, there's a whole household of Raider fans out there too. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, good Raider fans. Yeah, dope, dope, man. Yeah, good. Shout folks. out to them, man. Yeah, they always yeah. got they always good company, man. They always they're very welcoming. Yeah. Shout out to Randy Guerrero and the whole fam next door. Absolutely. Um, sorry I couldn't slide through last night. I got back late. Um, but Che came through late. So, yeah. Yeah, we were up. Yeah. We were fucking talking about everything. Talking some shit. Hell yeah, dog. So uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about the draft tonight. We're gonna hit you. We had a couple quick hits. A couple things we gotta we gotta tap on. Um, and then we got we got Kane. Uh, I think hopefully waiting in the wings. I don't know if you want to text him up, Jay. Make sure he's ready. Um, I, well, I, t- I told him eight thirty. So uh, let me go ahead and tell him. You know. Yeah, we we came on a little late. Up. Yeah, we had to rearrange some <clears throat> some things on the OBS. We had the cameras all yep. effed up, but uh, we we got that together now. So we should be good. Um, by the way, while we're at it, <clears throat> you could donate in the YouTube chat by smashing that little cash icon, or you can hit us at PayPal.me slash PJ4F. Of course, merchandise. If you want to support, we got OneNationFanWare.com, the hottest Raider fan gear in Raider Nation. You need to oh, check yeah. them out. Hands down. Um, Hands down. DC for all custom tees. Uh, Chase sporting that pillaging podcast official graphic tee that you can get at DC for all custom tees, as well as a few other items. Go get you one. Um, I got the bootleg remix courtesy of your boy, Gent. Hey, shout out, Gent, man. Yeah, you get that on, man. Shout out. Oh, look at that. Shoo! Bootleg. Spicy right there. Swaggering. Yeah, it's got that swaggering, boistering, uh, swaggering boisterously. Yeah. For those of you listening to audio, shout out to all of you on uh, Monday morning listening to this. Yeah. Getting through your work day. And of course, if you want a custom engraved ga- glass, go to bathgateengraving.etsy.com. Get you Let one you of these. with that nice pillaging podcast pint Get glass. You one of those right there. And of course, anything else you want engraved, they'll do that for you. And summer is approaching right around the corner. What you need is some nice, chill Mexican salsa, courtesy of Sal's Mexican Restaurant. That's right. That's right. You can hit them up at their main location in Selma, which is 559-896-0412. Ask for Sal or Carl with a K. Raider Nugs is wearing the OG logo shirt, the barrel shirt, which I think is still available over at DC for all custom tees. If not, we'll reach out and get that up there. That is a that is a dope. And then it said, it is the original. The rum it's barrel. It's the original yeah. logo, man. Yeah. So if you got one of those, mm-hmm. you're in the know. You, you've you been here since the start. Yeah, we even got the, the beginning. We even got the band stuff on We there. got the band stuff, too. <laughs> Go get you one of those. Yes. Yeah, if you're wondering why, like, all the other podcasts are allowed to use, like, Raiders logos and stuff, yeah, we're wondering, too. Because they're schoolboys this way. <laughs> they are. That's, yeah. I said it. I said it. I mean, you know. No disrespect, uh, but. no disrespect, but I mean, it's true. That's what it is. Um, and we will get to your phone calls later if anybody called in. I know it's been a while, guys. But this is a, kind of our new off-season schedule. We did this a bit last off-season, too. Yeah. Don't fret. When the regular season comes, we'll be hit you hard and fast every single oh, week. Yeah. Don't worry about that. We'll, and we'll get more consistent, too, down the stretch. But right now, man, it's just, uh, you know, life, bro. It is, man. And I've been working more Saturdays. I've been volunteering a lot on Saturdays. You have, man. So. You've been volunteering on Saturdays. Your boy... Is pulling grad school, man. I love that for you. I got the grad school going. I'm teaching and I'm daddying, bro. You know, got the munchkin. Yeah. So my time is taxed. Yeah. I'm trying to find some time just to, just to fucking breathe. Time you know keeps what I'm saying? On ticking, ticking into, into the, the future. future. <laughs> That's it. You're gonna get a lot of this all day, all show long, okay? all day, all show, all day. But uh, without further ado, let's get in, let's get into some Raiders talk. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's do it. Quick hits. Pow. Rest in peace to the Mad Bomber Daryl Lamonica. 
Rest in peace. Moment hey, of silence man. for uh, Daryl Mo- LaMonica, man. Pillaging. 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 Passed away in his Fresno home on Thursday. He was 80 years old. His death is considered natural causes, which is, you know, it's a bit of relief in this 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 day and age, man. This is true, man. So this that means true. that means he lived his life to the fullest and went when his time was up. Um, he got every single second out of that life too. Absolutely, Daryl Monica put up. I mean, ridiculous, ridiculous stats for his time. Absolutely, that, and and that's a, that's another thing that a lot of people don't consider about these. Old time greats, mm-hmm. you know, they're like, oh, look at the stats, man. They don't even, they're not even close to these quarterbacks. And I'm like, that's because they played during different times, man. Yeah. You, you're talking about a different game back then. You know, it was about running the ball and beating people up and being bloody and all that shit. There was no, there was no penalties, man. People were ripping each other's fucking heads off. Yeah. Right. So when you see the stats, that, line his stats up with all the other greats, you know, the, you'll see, you'll see that those, those old timers, man. They were doing the damn thing. Watch some video. Watch some old fucking games, and you'll see. Played in 151 games, 18 comebacks, 17 game-winning drives. Hey. And I really feel like Daryl LaMonica is the guy that gave the Raiders their image early on. Absolutely, man. Get the ball downfield. like Deep. That that deep ball threat, man, that's what the Raiders were all about, right? Throwing the ball deep, and who else to do it to, to really bring that to fruition than the Mad Bomber, bro? Yeah. You know? From uh, 1967 to 1969, only four losses. Yeah. That's fucking, that's major, bro. That's <laughs> yeah. major, bro. Yeah. 13 and 1, 11 and 2, 12 1 and 1 in uh, 1969 and 12 with the, with the tie. It's crazy. Um, pretty amazing. Uh, 164 touchdowns. Um, long was a uh, longest touchdown, with, I think, it was 93 yards. It's the bomber, dog. Yeah. The mad bomber, dog. The mad bomber, bro. That's what it is. Hey, man. R.I.P. Rest in peace, man. And, and thanks thanks for giving us your best years, man. We Absolutely. really appreciate that. As a fan, I mean, I didn't even get to see Daryl LaMonica play, and the mention of his name gives me goosebumps. Yeah. You know what I mean? Greatness, man. When they talk about the greatness of the Raiders, people pine over the Raiders. They get nostalgic over it. The, uh, the mystique, the persona, I mean, it, it goes back. It goes back to Daryl LaMonica. It goes back to a lot of them. Daryl LaMonica is, is, is a tentpole name in, in that whole batch yep. of Raiders lore. Yep. So uh, rest in peace. Um, All right, P, man. Respects to the LaMonica family. Uh, y'all are legends in our book. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you keep on keeping on. Um, hopefully we we get some dubs for you this year, Daryl. Absolutely, you man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, quiet too, man. Hey, we, we got, we got, so, we got a, a, a few people. We got a few people that we we need to have a season dedication to, mm-hmm. man. You know, we got Madden, we got LaMonica, yeah. you know, we we got some we got some legends that that left us and they deserve to to see us fucking put a season together yeah. to be proud of. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I hope I hope that that's in the back of the minds of of all the veteran players on this team and all the new coming players cuz you guys have just been indoctrinated to a, a a family in a nation right here, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Absolutely. I want to see that. Absolutely. I want to see that. Um moving on, quick hits, man. Hey, quick hits. <laughs> Raiders declined the fifth year options for JJ or Josh Jacobs, Abram, and Cleland Farrell. Mm-hmm. Um, so talk about that a little bit. I mean, it, this not a huge shock. No. And I, I think a lot of people at first might have been shocked on the Josh Jacobs thing. Yeah. But let's talk about that a little bit. I'm not really surprised on this when I saw it. I was like, okay, that's um, you know that that's a good move in my opinion. That that's mm-hmm. keen mm-hmm. right there. Uh, that that's great front office work because you know Josh. <clears throat> I'm not. I'm not want to blame it all on John, but I mean Josh Jacobs put this franchise on his back for the last three, yeah, four years. You know what I mean? He did. Uh, it was three years now, right? Three years. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I mean, wore the dude out. He came in with low mileage, bro. We <laughs> we drove him like a rental car, dog. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um, and that doesn't mean he, his career's done or anything like that. Not at with all the, with the Raiders. Not at all. You know, but um, I think with the two draft picks, we're going to get into those later in the show. Mm-hmm. Pretty high on on both of those guys. Um, but Josh Jacobs is, I, I think, in the twilight of his Raiders career. I, I think he could rejuvenate somewhere else, but you know, struggle with injuries. 
not quite what we wanted to see catching the ball out of the backfield, and maybe mm-hmm. that's for a lack of opportunity. I don't know. Right. You know, but uh, Josh Jacobs is still a monster in my book. Big fan of Josh Jacobs. Hope he has a great season. I uh, hope he comes back because I think he's 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 still an asset. I th- I think but, he still has a lot to give. Yeah, I do think he has a lot to give. Absolutely, man. Mm-hmm. Um, what the one thing I would say in in um, Ziegler and McDaniel's kind of commented on it um, when they were talk they were asked about you know drafting two running backs and what's that what's that all about mm-hmm. you know um, basically they said they're they're in they're all about bringing competition right so. Their their main thing is to make sure that there is competition at every position to push the players and and so that they get the best out of every player, right? So they're bringing in these young running backs. These motherfuckers want to get on the field. Mm-hmm. Zeus wants to get on the field, mm-hmm. okay? Brent Brown, seventh rounder, man, whatever hey. he may be, he, the motherfucker gets after it. If you guys go watch some film with this guy, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, he's, if we see him on the field. Go watch his film against LSU. Yeah, man. He was doing things. He was doing things. So they bring in competition. And we already know they declined the fifth-year option. Um, and it's a prove-it year. Okay? Prove to me that you are worth us you know, spending some cash on you. Right? Because we got these two young bucks here. They're going to be playing for us for dirt cheap. Right? And, you know, I hate to say it, but the bottom line is, is the NFL sees running backs as a diamond dozen, right? You look around the league, nobody pays running backs yeah. with exception for yeah. a couple of guys. Yeah. And like, really, like, there's a few guys that get paid. You got yourself, the, you know, you got Zeke over with the Cowboys, got paid, right? Mm-hmm. Derrick Henry, right? Um, and I don't know, I, it was, uh, did, uh, did Cook get paid with Minnesota? I think he might have gotten paid too. Yeah. Um, but that's pretty much it. McCaffrey, I think McCaffrey was due to get paid, or he did get paid maybe too, but we saw what happened with him. He's yeah. been injured the last two seasons. So, And outside of that, I mean, Cook and Henry, they're in a class of their own. Yeah, like, man. Like, they're like, yeah, yeah. So it, it, we've seen it up and down. Every team in the league does it, man. It, this, is, this is the new – it's the new – guide like you don't pay running backs it's the new style yeah it's 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 not it's not done anymore man we saw what happened in pittsburgh with uh with fucking uh, what's his name uh who's like basically out of the league now um but when he left everybody's like how do you not pay that guy mm-hmm. and then he went to the jets didn't do shit there nothing ends up with the chiefs didn't do shit there mm-hmm. now he's basically a lost a lost person Lost soul, bro. Like yeah. you, you don't, you ain't hearing about him no more. Yeah. I can't even remember his fucking name. David Franklin in the chat says Jacobs is a good back, but the Patriots never pay running backs. They run them and spit them out. And that's, that's another true. great point. That's a true, but um, you know we're not the Patriots, man. This is not the Patriot way. This is like Che just outlined the way of the NFL. These this days. is the NFL, man. Yeah. This this really is the NFL. Um, and and I said I made a comment the same uh the other day when we were talking about it, discussing it in the group chat. That this this could be the first thing that you could actually point to Ziegler and McDaniel's doing mm-hmm. the Patriot way, but this is really league wide, man. Yeah. The the league does not pay running backs. Yeah, it doesn't do it. And Chad picked you up, uh, Le'Veon Bell. <clears throat> there you go, Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, that's 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 who I was talking about. But see how I forgot about him. Uh, Red Red, Red, Red <laughs> Lizette wants to know and shout out, man, and shout out to Don Day, man. Welcome on back. Yeah, <clears throat> he said, uh, "Where do you guys think Abram stands?" I, I think he. Uh, he, I don't think he does stand. I, I think he just shoots his body at people. Yeah. Um, and I think, that, I think that's a problem, right? Um, I felt like Abram was getting back on the right track last year. We saw some yeah. good things out of him. But again, a mainstay on the injury report. Can't stay on the field. You know, They hear it time and time again. The best ability is availability. Um, and I think he's a liability as well. Yeah, I like Abram. You guys know my thoughts on Abram. He plays the Raider way. The dude plays Absolutely. with reckless abandon. Absolutely. Um, he, he likes to lay the punishment. Played a little bit more smart, smarter last year, a little bit more behind his pads. But yeah, I think we can do better. And and I think with you know, the money due coming up, I mean, you, you, you get younger, you get cheaper. Again, that's the NFL way. It's true. So, you know, with that being said, I, I think we have, we have bigger fish to fry. And we got some young corners, and our, you know I like our secondary right now. Um, you know, so to me that made sense. Yeah, no, and, absolutely, man. And then Cleveland Farrell, I mean, you guys, you guys are all very critical of Cleveland. He's, I, I want to call him 
I want to call him an absolute bust because he doesn't suck, right? Like uh, for me, a bust is a guy that comes in and some can't, people and, will argue with you, bro. I'm just I saying. know, but to me, a bust is a guy that comes in and and can't stay in the league, right? Right. Um, right. Clean the Farrell did not play up to his uh, round status, right? His first round draft, draft pick yeah, to his draft. So he's an underachiever. I would not call him an NFL bust. If that makes sense. If that's no, that fair. does make sense, man. You know, absolutely. But I see sense. where you guys are coming from. People that think he's a bust. Yeah, I get it. Like, you, 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 you know, you value that first round pick as do I. But I want to call him a bust. I think he's a hardworking guy. I think he's a role player. I just think we, you know, we drafted him too high. Yeah, you know. Yeah, we drafted him too absolutely. High. And, and you know what, man? Like, um, there's a lot of guys that people wanted over Clee uh, in that draft. And we've seen him, Allen, over with Jacksonville. Like, these guys, they're putting up some decent numbers. Um, but there's nothing that's, like, godly either. Yeah. Um, so, I, I don't know. I kind of have I kind of have my, um, I kind of have, like, kind of like, I mean, we didn't really go, go that wrong by drafting him. Mm-hmm. And like I said, the one thing that we did know about Cleveland is that he was pretty solid against the run. He put, he held up that edge when he was on the edge, right? right. The other thing about him is, is that he's never he's never been positioned solely at the edge, right? He's been shifted around, and now it looks like that's pretty much it, right? Yeah. He's pretty much locked in, or he's going to be backing up Jones every once in a while, come in, give him a spell. Um, but we'll see, man. It's yeah. it's it's still he's still a young player developing. And he's putting on more fucking strength, more muscle. He's getting more knowledgeable in the game. Talking about clean? Um, yeah. Yeah. And and I think I think he might pan out. Maybe he doesn't pan out with the Raiders. I think he eventually becomes a solid player um, that you don't diss as much <laughs> as yeah. we have in the past years, uh, man. Um, you know, Clay, Clay would have been pretty solid third-round pick. But guess what? We got Max Crosby in the third round. So. Yeah. You know, we got our first rounder in the third round, and we got our third rounder in the first that, round. But that's how it goes, though, it right? So, out like, to me, yeah. I mean, look at look at we we know now that Max would have been the first. He's a first rounder. Mm-hmm. The motherfucker is great, right? You go back and you see if you could mm-hmm. see forward into the future, and you saw what Max has done his first three seasons, right? You would say draft that motherfucker in the first round, yeah, right? But we didn't, and nobody had him, yeah pegged for a first round second round yeah and that's why we got him in the third round okay um it's it you know perspective is is real easy to call like as things start to develop but i i i think mm-hmm. i think um i think we took the players that we thought were gonna work and and it worked out anyways and i think if we did it worked out anyways if we didn't get clear at four somebody in that top 10 is probably gonna take them i had yeah. a feeling you know i had a feeling so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know it is what it is but we got Max Crosby anyway, so the fuck. And ain't matter. nobody bitching about that. The fuck does it matter, bro? It doesn't matter, bro. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. Yara yeah. mean. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> good point. Uh, Spike Katie says I see Farrell doing well in Graham's scheme, but not picking up his fifth year was the right call, and he might come back next year as a fringe starter. Yeah. Hey, look at man. They're they're all playing prove it years. And sometimes motherfuckers need a little bit of extra motivation, a little yeah. added motivation, right? So yeah. Josh Jacobs ain't going anywhere. He's going to be here. He's going to compete against these young bucks. If they see that they're all on the same level, then don't be surprised if, if Jacobs is gone. Yeah. Something happens, right? Yep. But the same thing goes for Clee and Abram. Like, pro- it, you got to prove it. You want to come back to this team. You want to stick with this team. You got you to gotta do what fucking, you know, what Max has done. Max has shown, like, I'm valuable. You got to fucking sign me. Yeah. And he got his money, man. Yeah. He got his money. And shout out to him for doing that. And I think he only gets better. He only gets better. Uh, what if, where did Farrell come out of? Uh, that was uh, Clemson. Yeah, Clemson. Okay. Um, and, hey, with uh, Farrell, uh, Neil Farrell and, and Matt Butler coming in as new D linemen. Hey. You got a guy right there who's now been in the league three years. We're going to talk about them. Great, guys. Great role player. You know, mm-hmm. let Clee, you know, help transition him in, man. Absolutely. You know, he's, he, you know he's a solid character, dude. So mm-hmm. um, he's going to, you know, play his role this year, and we'll see what happens. That that D-line rotation is solid right yeah. now. Solid. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, not hearing back from Kane, which is unfortunate. We got yeah. a little bit late start, so maybe that's on us. That's on us. Uh, man, Kane's moving up in the world out there, y'all. Yeah, man. You don't even know. Big uh, things for Kane, man. Yeah. 
Big shout out to Kane. Um, Check out his uh, his YouTube, his uh, tactical. Yeah, Kane's tactical. Video, yeah. Was it? Watch him fucking unload fucking cannons <laughs> at the shooting range. Go, <laughs> go, bro. Kane's ready for the apocalypse. Mm-hmm. He got that uh, black on black on black motorcycle too. Hey, shoo. Hey, I'm just saying right now, if some if some shit goes down, yeah. we're driving to fucking Arizona, bro. Yeah. We're going to Kane, man. What's he pushing out? BMW too? There you go, man. I don't know, man. man. This motherfucker, he bought a plot of land out there, bro. He's, he's got his own street, dog. He's winning right now, bro. Dude, he's winning. He's winning, bro. Yeah. Everything. He's winning life right now. See what happens when you move to Arizona? That's it, man. Shit. <laughs> so that's what happens when you move anywhere that's not fucking California or New York, bro. <laughs> you can succeed. <laughs> you can succeed, man. Everything's cheap. That's my lady's favorite sound drop right there. She, she a big fan of Clay Davis, <laughs> We watched that Wire, bro. Hell yeah! She's like, oh, that's where that comes from. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. So, hey, um, so we have her back from King. So we're gonna get into this draft class. What do you say we do the first three picks and we take a break, come back to the last three, and then go to the calls? Sounds good. You want to do that? That sounds good, bro. Let's get into it. Let's do it, son. Um, I wish I had some some draft class music to play for you to transition out, but I don't want to get hit with another YouTube strike. So, yeah. 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 Apparently, our Nesty Awards music is is uh, copyright protected, <laughs> which is weird because it's license free music that I that I picked. <laughs> And maybe they fucking stole it from somewhere, bro. I don't know, man. But it just seems like the world is against us sometimes. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> it's us against the world, son. Yeah. It's us against the world. It's all right. It's all right. It's a fucking travioso we're, we're, <laughs> podcast, bro. <laughs> That's true. Like I said, man, you know, we say some shit. So uh, let's let's get to this. We don't have the draft sound effect either, so we got to go with... Todd, Todd, Todd. Todd, 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 Todd. That's all we need. That's all we need. <laughs> and in round three, the Raiders drafted offensive guard OG DP. Are we going to yeah. call this guy DP? <laughs> I mean. Those that, those that know, know. Uh, personally, not into that. Um, I want to be bumping up against my buddy. Yeah, no, no. Um, no, no OG no. Dylan Parham out of Memphis, six foot three, 285 pounds. Yeah, man. Yeah. Check it out, dude. This kid, I'm not saying he's going to start or anything like that. Every obviously highlight film is highlight film, but even watching tape of this guy, you know, what do we see out of him? Stays on his toes. Yep. Athletic. Yep. Does not get beat. Mm-hmm. I mean, if he can help it, bro. Yeah. This kid is not getting beat. Yeah. Right. He's the reaction that he has to the moves and counter moves of the defensive lineman, and we saw film uh, against Houston. Mm-hmm. Um, where he went up against a guy that was touted uh, that actually went earlier, I guess, than he did uh, a defensive uh, tackle, uh, Hall, I think his last name was, mm-hmm. um, and that dude was fighting him, making moves, trying to swim, and dude was there. He was locked in, even when he was knocking the hands away. Those hands were being replaced right away, and he was engaging, reengaging, and and holding up, holding his ground, man. Hands and stay, stay inside, close to the body. Never seems to lose leverage. Yep. Very athletic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Move side to side, gets up. Finishing field. blocks. With the finishing blocks. Violently. Right? It, after the, 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 the whistle's blown, he's still moving, guys. Oh, David he's Frank, still pushing. David Franklin says 3 311 at the combine. There you go. Yeah. There you go. But moves nimbly, bro. Moving. Mm-hmm. And it, honestly, the 285, from, even from the tape we saw, that's a, that's a goddamn lie. But he's a big boy. He's he's solid, man. Yeah. And you know what? I think he, he's going to put on weight. Everybody does as they come into the league. They start. They get a, a, on a on a regimen in terms of their diet, and they're going to be lifting a hell of weight, yeah. right? So the the weight's going to start to stack on um, for this guy. I think he's he looks undersized, but he doesn't play undersized. No, and that's a great thing, right? Because um, he looks like he can hold his own very well yeah. against big dudes, man. Um, uh, and you know they have him listed as a guard and tackle, yeah, but. A lot of people are saying that he kind of projects as a center, you know. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see. I, I obviously he's going to be kind of in the mix. He's going to be backing up probably the interior yeah. three. Did you catch his interview? Because I didn't catch that. I didn't. I didn't. Okay. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't catch the interview because he's going to be a center. That I mean, that tells me the kid's got some brains on him. You right. know. But at six three, you know, not not short, 
but definitely not like your six seven, six eight fucking giant right. offensive lineman, right. which is always impressive to look at, right? You look right. at like this guy's a freaking monster. Yeah. But honestly, when it comes to like leverage, I, I, I like I kind of like the stouter. Um, you know, Low to the average, ground, yeah, yeah. You know, get, is able to get underneath mm-hmm. the pads of these bigger dudes, mm-hmm. right? Um, but also, you also got to keep in mind the fact that he, if he's an interior lineman, that's that's actually helpful for a quarterback to be able to see over the top, yeah, right? Exactly. When you got these big, massive motherfuckers <laughs> yeah. standing in front of you, you know, like yeah. you're gonna have some trouble seeing some shit. Yeah, you know what I mean. So a guy being six three instead of six six, mm-hmm. you know, that's that's a little bit of difference. In, in, in giving a, a, a wider view for your quarterback, especially when they're sitting in the pocket, right? Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see where he's at this year. I don't know that he starts at center this year. I think Andre James graded out pretty well last year. Mm-hmm. I know a lot, of you, a lot of you guys are very critical of him, yeah. um, but I think it overshadows like you know the good moments. You mm-hmm. know, good center mm-hmm. you don't really hear about too much. Yeah, it, it's quiet. You know what I mean? And yeah. I, I like that. So I thought Andre James was serviceable. No one's going to replace Hudson, um, but we'll we'll see what we get out of Parham. I I just really like his ability to stay on his toes. You never mm-hmm. saw those heels hit the ground. He never looks like he's in an uncomfortable position repositions himself can get upfield can move side to side uh, just very strong with the hands close to the body just the uh immovable force man just yeah. just strong the leverage always there yeah you know yeah so i like that i like that um if he does slot in I, it'll be interesting to see you know we were we were talking about offensive line this week in the text you know uh, you were thinking that maybe they they slot denzel good back over to right tackle until somebody's ready to grab that job and I personally saw good things out of Simpson last year, too. I feel like he's due for a breakout season. He could have a great season this year. I, I, I feel like our left tackle, right? Obviously, we already know Miller is there. He's the, the cornerstone of our offensive line at this point, right? Left tackle, our left guard, our center, and our right guard are already determined. Mm-hmm. I do, at least for this year, at least to start this year, right? Yeah. Now, if these young kids come in here and they start to show that they deserve some playing time, we might see a little mix-up. Yeah. But right now, I think it's determined that we have Miller, we have Simpson at left guard, we have James Samson, at center. Simpson. Samson Simpson! <laughs> and, then we, and then we have Leatherwood at right guard. Leatherwood. And motherfuckers are mad at Leatherwood, right? People yeah. are upset about him. And, and they talk. He caught a lot of fucking fire, bro. People were lighting his ass up all season long. But when he slid into guard... He settled down. He settled in, and he did well. And all I've seen from this motherfucker in the offseason is he ain't said shit, and all he's doing is working. So I can only imagine that he's going to come back better. And if they leave him at right guard where he did well, he Mm -hmm. did a lot better than right tackle, we can Mm -hmm. all agree on that shit, then I don't think that there's a reason to move him. And I think with good next to him, he's just that much better. Exactly. And so that's getting to to my point. Everybody is upset (laughs) with... With the fact that we don't have a right tackle, yeah. and that and that your boy is projected as the right tackle, Brandon right? Parker, yeah. yeah, yeah. But Denzel Good was supposed to be our right guard. Yeah, got injured, was out for the rest of the season. But we've seen him prior to last season fill in at those positions mm-hmm. at guard and at right tackle. Mm-hmm. And did well. Yeah. And I think if you give that dude the assignment, this is what you're going to play. This is what you're going to do. You let him focus. Remember, this is when he was a backup. He was just basically, whenever we tell you you're going in, you're filling in wherever the fuck we tell you. Yeah. Right? That's kind of hard to be successful all the time. Yeah. When you could be at left guard, you could be at right guard, you could be at right tackle. Yeah. Right? When you got a position that is designed and you, it's like basically like this is what you are, yeah, twenty four seven. All we want you worrying about is being a right tackle. Mm-hmm. I think he can be successful, man. I, hope I think so, he can man. be successful. I'm gonna be upset if Denzel Good is not starting on this line because I'm a big fan of Denzel Good. I just think the kid's been quietly like super solid for us. Yeah. So yeah, and, and for all the reasons you just mentioned, the fact that he can slot in there. Either way, any way you cut it, we still got to go over Thayer Munford Jr. Yeah. in round seven, who I, I think fits as a, a seventh round pick, but high ceiling. We'll talk about him in the in the second half Absolutely. of the show. Absolutely. But this this offensive line training camp is going to be competitive. Absolutely. It's going to be physical. And again, back to what Ziegler and McDaniels were talking about mm-hmm. in the interview, they want to bring in competition. Yep. So you bring in Parham, right? If he doesn't start, that's a good sign for DP, your for dog. the for the guys that are there. DP. Right? Yeah. DP, (laughs) 
DP. If if you bring if you bring him in and the guys that are already there hold their their spots, then that's a good sign because it says that the guys that played last season have developed, have matured a little further, and they're and they're becoming more solid, mm-hmm. right? Um, if he if he comes in and he lights fucking fire under people's asses and he wins a spot, mm. then fucking good on him. Yeah, that's a good sign, anyways, yeah. right? That's yeah. that's good for us, regardless. Yep, because he outright beat somebody to get that spot. Um, and the same thing goes for Munford, right? We already know that that right tackle position is kind of a fucking everyone's hands are up in the air in regards to that. Yeah, Parker's not seen as the 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 go to guy right now. <laughs> I hope not, He's just no. kind of seen as the guy that's there. Yeah. Because he's penciled in right because now. we have a need. Yeah. Right? He's penciled in there. He's nervous, right? We now. got good and then we got, you know, Munford now. Yeah. Which, like you said, we'll talk about him. Yeah. Um so we'll see what happens, man. A lot of good Let's knowledge in the chat right now. David Franklin Leatherwood working with Duke Mannyweather. There we go. That's a hell of a name. Technique coach who coaches the best players in the NFL this offseason. I there you go. love to hear that, man. There you go. If, if somehow Leatherwood can make that jump, fill the slot at right tackle, and we get good back to right guard, it's gonna be a great offensive line this year. This is um, true. Raider Nug says McDaniels and Ziegler were saying that the O line guys practice at every position, so it doesn't sound like a long shot to have any one of them play at guard or tackle. And and that's pretty. I would say that's par for the course in most organizations. Yeah. Um, because you know you get a lineman go down that that can be. I mean, it's a huge. That's blow just prep. That's I mean that's I mean we saw that we saw that from um, you know what's what's what was our offensive line coach what Tom Cable Tom Cable bro, we saw that from Tom Cable he he did the same thing. He had offensive linemen practicing all positions because you just never know. You never know who's going to go down. You never know who goes down with an injury, and you never know what you're going to have to fill. So you got to be prepared to go anywhere you can, yeah. right? But that being said, if you got a guy that's solid at a position, you mm-hmm. want to keep him there, yeah. right? You don't want to fucking have him shifting around. And, I, and somebody asked earlier, I think it was uh, Spikehead, was wondering about our new offensive line coach and what his scheme is. I'm going to be honest with you. I really don't know. I need to study up on that. But I, what I do know is Tom Cable, in respect to Tom Cable, man, he he did a lot of work with us, man, this this yeah. last stint. I was really impressed. Yeah. But he asked a lot out of his offensive line. Oh, absolutely. Like an absolute lot. You're pulling. You're moving. You're, you're getting downfield. Um, so we'll see. Maybe maybe this new scheme will be a little bit more favorable, a little bit more generous some of these younger cats we got up and down the line. Real quick, shout out to Dapper Dan. Shout out. Hey, shout out, Dan. Hey, by the way, Senior Org doing work down here in Gilroy. Hey. And I just want you all to know you need to send more people down here because you guys have a lot of love. Like behind closed doors, good things are being said about all y'all. And I'm 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 throwing my two cents in there too because y'all go. are good people. Y'all are taking over. Y'all are taking over up there, there in go. San Jose. And I there love to see that, man. Because fuck those people that I left, bro. <laughs> y'all, y'all do the work. Trust, trust. Hey. Uh, Scott hey. S says couldn't click fast enough when I saw pillaging going live. Well, you're 30 minutes late, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. We're we're about six weeks late. So welcome, man. Hey, I, it's all love. I'm just fucking around. You know Thanks. me. Thanks, man. Uh, so let's move on around two. Yeah. Hey. Let's so do- what, what what do you give the Parham grade? What do you give it? I mean, I, I like I like the Parham uh, draft because it's a position of need. We need backups. We talked about it all last season about how we didn't have the depth that was necessary to be successful, right, at, at the offensive line position. So, yes, I'm happy with it. I, I give it an A um, because he's a solid dude. From what we saw on film, I, I see him sliding in as a great backup. You know, potential starter, man. Potential starter. I give it an A, too. Yeah. I don't think it's gonna be long before this kid's starting. Yeah, and that's a, and he was a third rounder. Remember, we didn't have a first round and a second round pick. If we want to talk about our first round and our second round, we got A's for that because we fucking got Devontae Adams. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's it. That's A, bro. Um, and you know, a lot of people said this is a uh, not the greatest draft class, but I kind of like that. That means there's no hype, there's no expectation, and right. I like that. Right. We got we move. You like that? Real G's move in silence like lasagna. <laughs> Figure that one out. Lil Wayne. Shout out Lil Wayne. <clears throat> Todd, 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 Todd. Round Todd. four. Hey. Raiders select running back Zamir Zeus White out of Georgia. Hey. Six foot even, 215 pounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Bro. Mm hmm. The kid's got Twitch, man. He does. I will say that. I like that. I like his, you know. Th- 
right off the bat, we're going to talk about it, right? The ACL injuries. Dude's mm-hmm. injured both ACLs left and right. Yeah. Early in his career, though, like high school, right? Yeah. yeah. Healed up. The, his lateral movement, his quick cut, showing no side effects, bro. No fix. No fix. None at all. What I, what I did notice from the tape is even when he breaks free, he, he's got a gear, but I wouldn't say it's the fastest. I know he ran the 4-4, but in pads... I don't know that he's that fast from what I saw. I've seen him get chased down a lot, but his vision, excellent. Yeah. Catch the ball out of the the backfield. The fuck is that, bro? Cats, bro. <laughs> Some Shoot. fucking cats out there fighting for their goddamn I, lives I, right now. I think uh, the cats versus um the uh what do you call them? The, the raccoons, dog. Oh. They got raccoons okay. in the neighborhood. Holy yeah. shit. So I think it's about to go down. It's I think, about to go down. Yeah, out there, yeah, let's get ready to get ready. <laughs> um Hey Soki Slim, shout out. So that's what I like about him. His his juke. I like yeah. his juke. Yeah. And uh like his hands. You know, like I like how fast he hits the hole, right? Mm-hmm. No hesitation, mm-hmm. great vision. Um, what do you think about Zamir White, man? I mean, I, I, everything that you just said, I agree with. Obviously, mm-hmm. um, this guy has he has good vision. He has good vision. He he sees what's happening with the offensive line. He makes a decision. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple of plays that were shown where he may have made a decision a little too too quickly. Yeah, but overall. The dude allows things to develop in front of him and yeah. then attacks accordingly. Mm-hmm. And that's that's nice. Mm-hmm. That's really nice, especially when you're talking about inside line, right? Mm-hmm. Um <clears throat> hips wise, and you you commented on this, this guy's really he's got he's got nice control over his body, man. Mm. He plants, he cuts, he makes a fucking move and he's able to get forward. Like it's a lot of guys make a move to the side. They lose some speed, mm-hmm. right? They got to get themselves back, redirected, and then they're able to move forward. Mm-hmm. This guy makes a stop, and he's cutting yeah. up, upfield right. at that stop, right? right? Wherever he puts plants that foot, um, and he he's he's able to move forward. This guy doesn't. You have like zero film of him going backwards. Everything's forward, even if it's a short run. He's falling forward. He's moving the pile. He's dragging some people with him. Um, I, I like what we see from him, man. You talked about him getting chased down. I I saw him more along the lines of if he's in lo- if he's side by side with somebody, he's not going to pull away necessarily. But if he's ahead of people, they're not going to catch. Him. They're not catching him. Yeah. Okay. And that's where you do see the four four speed, mm-hmm. right? Because he's able to stay mm-hmm. ahead of people. Mm-hmm. He's not getting chased down. Real easily, right? Mm-hmm. But when side by side, yeah, that people. I mean, he's not running a four two, yeah, right. He's not just like fucking pulling away from people, right? So, um, but I mean, there's not a whole lot of running backs that that run at that speed, anyways, right? So, um, I mean, can we name one a running back currently that runs a four two four three? No, that's five receiver speed. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So four four is decent speed, and like I said, if he gets ahead of people, if he gets uh behind the defense. It's over. He's gonna fucking go house. He's gonna go house, man. And and he's not an easy tackle in the first place. So if if you're gonna be chasing him down and trying to grab Jersey, you're probably not gonna be successful. Yeah. The good point. Really good point. Um I think what I don't like is the pass protection. Yeah. Didn't see a whole lot there. Needs to improve. Needs to improve, um, definitely. I don't know that he's going to steal a starting job first year. Josh yeah. Jacobs is going to get his chance this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he, if Josh Jacobs still serves a purpose, he's going to punish defenses. Mm-hmm. And that's not to see that Zamir White is, <clears throat> is easy to take down. I don't see Zamir breaking a lot of tackles, but he, those those feet stay moving and they stay moving fast. Yeah. So he's finishing runs, right? He's yes. finishing runs moving yes. forward. What I used to like about, uh, what's his name, uh, Washington, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, not the greatest running back, but always finish runs. Same thing with White, always moving forward. Like, like you said, right. always following forward. Yeah. Um, you know, you might hit him at the uh, you know, one-yard gain. He's going to fall forward for two more. So Absolutely. So you're always going to get three yards out of Zimmer White, from what I can tell. Pass protection, probably the, the biggest weak spot right now. And, you know, at 215 pounds, six feet, pretty solid. But, again, yeah. not a punishing back, not his style, which is great. <laughs> Which is great for like sustainability, right? For, for, for down the stretch, right? Yeah. We, hopefully, we keep this kid healthy. Whereas Josh Jacobs, no fear. Yeah. And it's kind of why he is where he's at in his career. And that's that's the difference we, between the two. Really, yeah. is is Jacobs invites contact and fucking relishes it, and Zamir White 
he's gonna he's gonna make the move to avoid having solid contact on his body. Yeah, I like that. That's what allows him to yeah. m- continue to progress forward, mm-hmm. right? And we see Jacobs moves forward too. He makes progress moving forward too, right. but he fucking brings right. brings that meat, bro. He but he's he wants to put some fucking shoulders into some people. So what I think we arrived at is that we now have a really solid one two punch. Yeah. Not that we did it with Drake and other cats, but you know, White's coming in, he's a young cat, he's fresh hopefully going to stay healthy and we'll have that one two punch all season you mm-hmm. know or for the majority of it and is able to step in as as a three down back if Jacobs goes down right if Zamir White's not available then Jacobs is in there until he's not so it's just very well rounded running back core right now i think Zamir White's an excellent comp compliment we got that you know, thunder and lightning right now so mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. to say not to say J- Jacobs is slow by by any means no um real quick Hey. Shout out to Silky Slim. Shout out, brother. Cheers. I don't need more coffee. Hey. 1999 donation in the chat. No comment. Put his money on the table. Walked away. That's him, man. He's a fucking That's him, badass, bro. That's our boy right there. Mm-hmm. And shout out to you, Mike, man. I know you were like, yo, just fucking do a show already. Like, yeah. we don't care what you talk about, man. Yeah. And, and you know what? To that I say, we don't care about what we talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Because we're just yeah. going to talk the shit anyways, bro. <laughs> just going to talk shit anyways. But, hey, man, we appreciate you, yeah, dog. No, no comment. We appreciate just you. Palm the money, give the daps. And then I looked, and I was like, oh, there's 20 bucks in my hand, bro. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. sorry you didn't get the bindle. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I like Zemir White, man. I like Zemir White. And, and play for Georgia, so we went up against some great competition, too, so you know that. that. That's another thing I like about this draft. Kind of a carryover, I guess, from the Mayock regime. Is um you know drafted guys from big schools yeah you know yeah with, with I mean Memphis right was yeah. uh was where we got uh, Parham from mm-hmm. and then um that was it though yeah that was it right because yeah. everybody else came from yeah Georgia yeah. LSU Tennessee Ohio, Ohio State, State UCLA yeah I mean UCLA kind of not, not a small school but not I mean it's, it's they're not a powerhouse Pac twelve they're not a powerhouse they're not a powerhouse they did play LSU dude they ran all and the and they ran them and, uh, and we'll talk about that we're gonna talk no, about that gonna talk hey, about stay that. tuned for Britton Brown dude mm-hmm. our last pick don't sleep on that mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got mm-hmm. a little hot take coming with that too yeah. um Bonnie bites animation says. Trade offer you receive Justin Jefferson, I receive Matt Collins. <laughs> I'm gonna pass. <laughs> I'm just gonna pass. <laughs> you know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I guess, man, if that's what you want, <laughs> yeah. if that's what you want, man. You receive four grams. I receive sixty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Or one gram, and I get eighty five. Well, <laughs> there you go. Now we're talking about something else. There we go. <laughs> just because hey. I don't know you, you just because you don't. Yeah, just because you don't. Know. You get the homie price is a little hey. bit different. <laughs> hey, Todd, 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 Todd. All right, man. Again in the fourth round. Let's let's get into this defense. This might be my two favorite picks of the draft. Yeah. 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 Defensive. Hands down. Hands, hands down, down, bro. Hands down. Hey. Put your hands up. Yeah. Put your hands down. Put them down. <laughs> Put your fucking hands down. <laughs> Get your hands out of my pockets. <laughs> Defensive tackle Neil Farrell. I know you're triggered by the name, <laughs> but it's Farrell, not Furl. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. At LSU, six foot four, 319 <clears throat> pounds. Call bullshit. This kid's like 330. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. But he runs like he's 295. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there doesn't seem to be a player in college football that, that knows how to stop Neil Farrell. Hey. We watched the one-on-one drills from the Senior Bowl, which you pointed out. Oh. Just wrecking shot, bro. <laughs> he was just wrecking shot, bro. Hey, Russell Wilson is not sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey. Talk about this guy, bro, because I can't even get words out of my mouth. No, right look, now. this this guy, I mean, look, you see fucking Kenny's giddy over here, man. And look, we have, you know, we've had many a discussion about, you know, you know, wanting to see positive Kenny. This is a positive ass Kenny right I'm here, man. He's a ha- right this is a happy ass Kenny right here, man. Yeah. And this guy is part of the reason because you watch this motherfucker's film. This motherfucker is non-stop. <laughs> non Stop yeah. beating double teams, beating one on ones, and the this dude just he doesn't stop. He's he's his motor doesn't stop. And guess what? We got another player like that. He's a pretty good motherfucking player. 
Max Crosby's Max got Crosby. a motor that never fucking stops either, bro. bro. Max Crosby's loving this pick, bro. Absolutely, Because man. Neil Farrell's is going to be pushing food on the Max's plate, uh-huh. dog, all uh-huh. season. Neil Farrell reminds me of my 76 Monte Carlo. Because even when I turned that thing off, the engine kicked over a couple more times, bro. That thing would not stop, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> bro, I'm pulling up with that's the, fucking the, the, fantastic. And all green Monte Carlo with the sheepskin shirt. Shoo! Well, bro. Hey, know, hey, watch you know, out now! My Shoot. senior year of high school, bro. Was you fucking? They used to call you Gator. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Gator don't take no shit. <laughs> Damn. You see fucking Kenny walking down the street in a fucking fur coat and some goddamn fucking uh, <laughs> some platform hey, fucking you shoes, bro, with a goddamn goldfish. You in ain't them, never bro. seen me walking down the street. You see me pushing that Monte Carlo <laughs> everywhere, bro. When I got that car, hey. Hey, I would drive that like five houses down, bro. I'm coming over, hopping the ride, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I do. You, you, I, I can hear the fucking music, bro. Hey, hey, do 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 do. Yeah. What was the jam I played in that? Uh, uh, parental discretion is advised. Oh NWA, yeah, you did. Oh, yeah, you was fucking. Did. I had the two tens in the yeah. back seat, bro. I had the box in the back seat for That's maximum sad, bump, bro. Uh, I had the I had the deck on the front seat because I couldn't mount it in the vintage, bro. <laughs> Yeah, bro, I was riding dirty. Yeah, bro. you did. <laughs> yeah. Cables fucking yeah. going everywhere, bro. And the homie, you probably up. had some duct tape to sit him down. <laughs> My homie said he could hook up the stereo, and then he got in there. He's like, I don't know what to do with this. I'm like, bro, just get it done. I don't give a fuck, bro. I don't give a fuck. Just make it work, dude. Just got make the, it work. Got the two tens from the. the I don't sw- care if it looks nice. Just make it work. I got the two tens from the the swap meet from the Bay Area. There so you go. Meet, yeah, bro. you did. Yeah, you yeah, did. I was yeah, you did. Bro. Hell yeah. <laughs> la pulga, shout out, pulga, man. La pulga. Hey. Hey, shout out. Um, so off track, Neil Farrell is a goddamn <laughs> beast, bro. This guy, I mean, this guy has moves, but his off-the-ball speed is freaking ridiculous. The only thing that makes me nervous is, like, he could possibly be a false start machine. Yeah. But I kind of doubt it. I mean, he's playing in stadiums with 100,000-plus mm-hmm. fans. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know what his penalty rating is. I don't know how many racked up or whatever. But yeah. his ability to get off the ball and just beat offensive linemen – more than I saw him using hand moves or spins, which we saw the spin, this dude just using his fucking shoulder, bro. Quick step. And brute Quick force. step Quick and getting step. into people. He's, yeah. get, he's getting into people. He's that's getting, that's the key, bro. That's the key. Yeah. But I, but I mean, not. but you mentioned it. He does have hand moves, man. Okay. So many a time you see this guy, if you're, if you're watching the film, you know, if, especially if you're seeing somebody that's cutting up film and they're slowing it down for you, you're seeing this guy, he'll hit his gaps. Right, and let's say it's a running play. Uh, many times we've seen this guy moving into a gap. The ball's going in the opposite direction with one fucking club, kind of a la Reggie White, bro. Uh, fucking uh, pow, and just un- unlocking from the fucking block and making, and then and then he goes from here to fucking full out spread and fucking grabbing onto the running backs over and over again, man. Yeah. Um, this guy's going to be a force, bro. He's going to be a force. And he's got that club with both hands, bro. The, the off yeah. hand and the dominant. Left or right, bro. You yeah. can get it. You, you can get it, bro. You can get either way, bro. You can get either one of these hands, yeah. son. Either one. No. This guy, man, y'all should be excited about this dude. Go go watch the film. If you if you don't know nothing about him, and you're like, what the fuck are these guys talking about, man? Why are they so fucking happy about this dude? Go watch the film. Go watch the film. Go watch the film because this guy... Non-stop. He's bringing it every fucking play. Shutting down double teams, mm-hmm. breaking, like splitting double teams, getting into the fucking quarterback's ass, putting fucking centers yeah. in his fucking yeah. lap, like putting gonna, centers yeah. in quarterback's laps, like I gonna, constantly. I was going to say, even if he doesn't get off the block, it's sled drill, bro. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And it's progress. Like, it's not like, you know, you see guys like starting to push a guy and then they get to a certain point and then it gets stuck. They yeah. get like stopped, stuck in the water and then they're just kind of like, Putting yeah, their hands up. Yeah, yeah. Now this motherfucker keeps driving Ooh. motherfuckers at the same speed all the way to the quarterback, man. All Angry. the way to the quarterback and finishes, bro. Yeah, bro. F- comes from the other side of the field to finish, bro. Sniffing out the ball, wanting to mm-hmm. be involved, mm-hmm. finishing out plays. Yeah, no quit. Starting to see a trend, Raider Nation. Mm-hmm. None of these guys quit. High mm-hmm. motor, mm-hmm. high motor. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the other thing about Farrell? Oh yeah, he's a beast. Yeah. Uh, no, one other thing. Yeah, I mean, 
quarterbacks are going to get lap dances this year from their own centers, dog. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing there, bro? You're grinding up on fools, bro. Hey, Sierra's going to get jealous, bro. I'm grinding like your aunt at a wedding, bro. <laughs> like your aunt at a wedding, bro. Sierra's going to get jealous, bro. <laughs> She'll be like, that's my man. Sierra ain't jealous, bro. <laughs> She's not jealous, dog. I know. She's just like, the fuck, bro? Hey. What do I do? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and and uh, nimble, bro. Really nimble. Yeah, yeah, man. Real nimble. Twinkle toes. Somebody somebody who's cutting up film called them twinkle toes, mm-hmm. bro. Um, I think that was uh, Raid the Tape. Shout out to Raid the Tape, man. Hell yeah, man. Shout out to Raid the Tape, man. Hey. We might we might have to you know link up, bro. Because hey, you, you, you do a good job, son. Somebody put the word out. Raid the Tape. You want to you want to come in with these OGs and uh, teach us a thing or two, man. Hey, come there you on go. in. We're, we're interested go. about your background. Like we were talking about, what did he play? I was thinking like maybe corner. Yeah, that's my guess. Yeah, I don't know. It's a good call though. Mm-hmm. I think I think you're right. Mm-hmm. D- defensive back for sure. Yeah, defensive back for Big sure. Cat. Yeah, nice hat too, bro. Nice hey, hat. hey yeah, how, what do you think of my new hat? I got the silver shield. That's a fire fucking hat, the, bro. The camo brim. Yeah, it's kind of like hat. it. Stump. We won't talk about the patch on Stump. the side. No, we'll talk about this. <laughs> we'll talk about this. <laughs> we'll talk about this. Nice why do you even fucking mention this, bro? It's it's nice looking patch. Just want to ask any questions, bro. I have I have not re upped on my hat game, but I will very soon. Yeah, by the start of the season. Your boy will have a new Raider hat. Okay. Not that this one's going to get retired. It's just going to be in rotation. I might have to cop a gray hat because I have only black that's, hats. That's where I'm going. I'm, I'm thinking about going next. Going back to gray. This is a gray, but it's dark. So it's it's almost, yeah. you know, almost black. You have that kind of a tweed gray or twill. I don't know what the. It's pa- that heather gray. Yeah, bro. the heather gray. Yeah. I like that shit. That was nice. Yeah. I always like to grab those. Yeah. There's a few hats out there that, mm-hmm. that I'm looking at. Mm-hmm. Just saying. All right. Just saying. It's Either nice. that, I might go back to the all blacked out one. Yeah. Because that's a never fail. That's a no. You know? Yeah, that's a no brainer. You know, I'll, I'll probably be copping a few hats this, yeah. this uh, before the start of the season. And just just, just word. I'm just giving yeah. word. Don't buy the fucking same hat. <laughs> Motherfucker. Right now, I got my optimistic <laughs> hat on. So uh, y'all should be happy <laughs> about that. I like these picks, dog. I was hella pessimistic, too. I really was the most uninvolved in a draft that I've been in a long time. Mm-hmm. Just because we have a first and second. So it's like, what am I going to do? Predict the fifth round draft pick for the Raiders? That would have been right. amazing. Right. But I'm not that good. I mean, full right. disclosure, I'm not that good. Right. Um, so I was like, Let, let's just see how it plays out. I'm not I'm not going to. I'm not one of those people that likes to sit and watch the draft, dude. Mm. For me, I don't get excited. For me, it's like a big waste of time. Like, I'll catch up with it right after it. Right after the picks, I'll catch up. But yeah. I'm not going to sit there and watch everybody make their picks and stuff. For me, it's just dragged on too long. I, I, I like watching a man when we have, you know, a round one, round two pick. I, I think it's, know? yeah, for it's sure. It's a little more exciting. It's exciting. Right? Like yeah, yeah. You want to see what's going to happen. Yeah. But, you I know, agree. with, with, with the it, way things went this season yeah. and, and the fact that we were like, we're cool with round one and two. Yeah. And honestly, look, man, um, aside from the fact that we got Devontae Adams for our one and two, mm. right, which was fucking more than worth it. Mm. We got Chandler Jones, too, though. Dude. And we got Chandler Jones. But aside from that, this is not a, this was not an exciting draft at, at the top end, okay? Mm-hmm. There wasn't anybody at the top end that you were like salivating like fuck. We need that guy yeah. with uh, fucking maybe exception for fucking Jordan. Fucking what's his name from fucking Georgia? Yeah. That big beast motherfucker, bro. Okay, that guy was like I was like okay, and then I kind of was I was kind of you know, I was kind of digging Sauce Gardner right as at corner, mm-hmm. but outside of those guys, there was nobody really. I was like oh shit, yeah, we gotta have this guy. Yeah, we'll find you know? out. Those guys were there. We just don't know yet. But look, I mean, I wanted. Jordan, I, I wanted Jordan for fucking the fact that he's a big beast interior because mm-hmm. I thought the same thing. We need somebody on the inside mm-hmm. to wreak havoc so that fucking Crosby and Jones can fucking eat. Mm-hmm. I think we got that. Yeah, I think we do. Too. I think we got that. Neil Farrell causes chaos. Oh, bro. yeah. That's, I think we got that. And then the view from 30,000 feet, right, of the draft. Mm-hmm. What I really like about this front office now, what was cringe before was the mm-hmm. way. Mayock and Gruden would just gush over these guys. Like you can tell they had fallen in love with these dudes before the draft. And I think that's dangerous. Mm-hmm. I think that's dangerous when it comes to selecting. This front office just seems to be business as usual. Mm-hmm. And I like that. It's tactical, it's strategical, and it's no hard feelings. Well, and I think this, it's it's um They're not married to any of these picks. They, these two guys are coming in here with the already established relationship. Mm-hmm. McDaniels trusts Ziegler. They stuck to their board. He's not going to step on his feet. He's like, you're GM. Yeah. I trust what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. 
you know what the needs are of this team, and you know what I want to yeah. do. He's not in there swinging his dick around. Nah, bro. he's not trying like to be the fucking the head honcho. Yeah. He's not trying to be the guy that controls everything. Yeah. He's like, look, I know what you you can do. Do your thing. Yeah, do your thing. We're gonna converse. We're gonna talk. But I trust you in the in the moves and the directions you're gonna go. And from what we and know, that's good, bro. That's what we want. We don't want our head coach being our fucking GM. Absolutely not. You know, and that's where it was. And I kind of. You know, I gave Mayock a lot of credit, and I still think that's like his picks, like Mayock's picks. We're the third rounders, bro. Yeah. Yeah. And we did very well there. Yeah. Um, but I think his mistake was allowing uh, Gruden uh, to dictate those early Gruden picks. and Tom, because yeah. Tom Cable had his picks too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think they had their strategy, and they stuck to their board, and they didn't get emotional, and they didn't fall in love with anybody, and they didn't make any stupid moves. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They didn't get thirsty. There you go. You know what I'm saying? So I really like that. Again, the view from thirty thousand feet. This, I love where this is going already. Mm-hmm. You know, I've been talking about Ziegler for the few shows we've had in the off season. I've been telling y'all like this is this cat's young and he's smart. And the fact that Belichick was really unhappy mm-hmm. that he's gone, that's a really good sign. Everybody. Yeah, you should be super happy that we yeah. made Belichick unhappy. Man. Yeah, <laughs> and in fact, while we're <laughs> at it, while we're at it, let's give uh, you know it's a little spiel on, on McDaniel's. I don't think he's here to bring the Patriot away. I think he learned that lesson already. Yeah. I think he's going to do his own thing, and he's coming in now with this massive chip on his shoulder. Mm-hmm. Because if he fails, there's no going back to New England this time. No, no. And his stock is going to fall if yeah. he falls on its face. Absolutely. It's all or nothing. Like, McDaniels is in his contract year mm-hmm. this year. That's a good point. Man. Year one. That's a good point. A lot to prove. You know what I mean? So I like that. I like where he's at. You know, so... That's that's I, I I love I love what you what you said there, man. Mm-hmm. Like this guy has got a lot of motivation, um, and he's not bringing the Patriot way. You know why? The Patriots Belichick way. Yeah, you're not Belichick. Okay, so that was your first mistake. If that's what you were trying to do when you got hired at head coach, you were just trying to be another Bill Belichick. You got to be yourself, son. Right, like. You can be inspired by somebody. You could be mentored by somebody. You could be influenced by somebody. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, you have to be you. Yeah. If you're too busy trying to be somebody else, yeah. you're never going to be successful because you're not being who you're supposed to be. Right. Which is you. Yeah. Right. So he comes into this. He's fre- it's a fresh start, man. He's excited. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of fucking excitement. This team just went to the playoffs. Yeah. We feel like we could build off of that. Yeah. Right. We got beautiful fucking stadium. Like everything's headed in the right direction, right? This is a perfect circumstance for him. Mm-hmm. And all he's got to do is just not make the same mistakes he made previously. And he's if he's fucking smart enough, yeah. he learned from those mistakes, yeah. right? So be you, Josh. Be you, man. You ain't Bill. Yeah. Don't be fucking Bill. Yeah. Bill's a grumpy asshole, bro. Yeah. Oh, Don't man. be that fucker. Because the Patriot way works when you're winning yeah. every year. But it pisses motherfuckers yeah. off, bro. Yeah. You've seen people leave and speak out. Yeah. When they're not winning, bro, that shit's going to go to hell fast. Oh, yeah. Look at Bill Parcells and his coaching career. When his team did not win, it did not last long for him or his players. Exactly. And Belichick's the same way, right? They all come from that same. So you better do well, Josh McDaniels, because you've got to real punchable face. <laughs> and I don't know what it is. If you haven't figured it out already, man, <laughs> Raider Nation got a real short fuse. And a fucking short left hook. Yeah. <laughs> That's just compact, bro. That's just explosive, dog. Stay off Twitter, Josh. <laughs> Stay the fuck off Twitter. Oh, shit. Stay away from that shit, bro. You get your feelings hurt. I'm going to root for you and, until you give me reasons not to. Hey. And I think if he fails here, his coaching career is not over. He'll go back to being an offensive coordinator, but you can tell he wants more. You know, he's paid his dues there, yeah. and, and now's the time. And you're you're in a, a great organization, in my opinion. You're in a building that smells like new carpet. Hey. And let's face the facts, bro. It's got that new car feel. That, that new carpet smell. Uh, that smells like success, bro. Yeah. yeah. That's what that smells yeah. like. You see yeah. that? I just put that shit in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I paid fucking ten thousand dollars for that shit. That shit is scotch guarded, bro. It's beautiful. <laughs> Stain resistant, bro. Mm, you go ahead, spill your wine right now. Yeah. Spill your wine. Spill the see wine. How, see how I just sitting there? Kiss just puddled on the top girl. of that shit. Ain't going nowhere. It's not gonna <laughs> soak it. Fuck that shit. Scotch guard. <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, Pillaging Podcast not sponsored by Scott Garden. <laughs> but we should be. <laughs> yeah. should hey. be sponsored by a whole lot of motherfuckers. We don't get no dimes from these motherfuckers. Yeah, because they spilled a lot on us and none of yeah. it sticks. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is true. Um, <laughs> Shout but, out, lawyers. But uh, yeah. So that's, that's <laughs> the view from 30,000 feet. Hey. Um, that's the first three picks. We're going to take a short break. Yeah, we are. And we'll be back in two and two. Ooh. Chuck Woolery. Shout out. <laughs> Yow. You know what time it is? It didn't take long. It's time for some cellas. Hey, yeah. Ciao. Hey, I hope you guys are ready, man. You guys, if you guys don't have a cella in your hand, you're underprepared. Mm-hmm. And that's a sad thing, man. Mm-hmm. I'm disappointed in you. Just saying. Modern Times you, beer. You better have something in your hand. Better have something, bro. I don't better care. have something. Your boy Kenny got something in his hands, too. He's oh, going to yeah. tell you about that shit right, right now, but I'm, I'm going to get into this. Mm. This is a hazy double IPA. This is coming in at 8.9 on the ABV. Mm. This is that circular displacement. This is a cool little label. That was a trippy cam, bro. It's a cool little label. Modern Times, man. Modern Times got some cool Yeah, they're like cool the, stuff, bro. They're like the Thought Space Athletics of beers, there you bro. Go. There you go. Right? I like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah. This is real graphical, bro. You're <laughs> yeah. right, bro. That's, that's accurate. I love that. That's accurate, yeah. sir. A little hazy, nice. I'm gonna try to get a TSA poster for uh, the dye station, bro. Ooh, there you go. Because I already got dye on the fucking wall. Bro. Hey man, there's some hot pink on there. Get that shit. Yeah, you do. Let me get a taste of that. That what is that? Eight point nine, bro. Eight point nine, bro. He's gonna put you to sleep. Hold on to your seat, bro. It's gonna put me in jail, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't go to sleep. I go to jail. Bro. Oh yeah, Circular look at that. You see that? Man. There you go. So you guys can see the clarity on that right there. It's coming in like orange juice. Oh, that is dangerously good, bro. Oh, so bright. That's some bright flavor right there. That is really good. It is not bitter. No. For an 8.9. No, just that citrusy-ass flavor. Again, a lot of the hazies have that citrusy flavor, man. A little bit of bite on the tongue, right? But super... Oh, man, this is really this is really bright. The other one was flavorful, full-flavored, though. Malty, right? And this one... It's a little more bright, man. So I don't know. I don't know. Tell me, tell them a little bit more about it, bro. You get you. I'm you the English major. You got all them fucking. Huh? All them, you got all them words, bro. All them descriptive words. Well, it is bright. I will say it's 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 sweet off the top, but the finish is crisp and dry, which is a really nice balance. There you go. And again, I'm getting a lot of orange out of this as well. A lot of a lot of orange citrus out of yeah. this. Um, it's not bitter at all. The bite is there, and then it's gone. It's just not too much. Mm-hmm. This is a really nice beer, and I'm shocked that this 8.9. I can taste the alcohol in it a bit, yeah, but it's very smooth. I mean, I took this drink, and I got warm, bro. Um, <laughs> if, you, if you had a cooler full of this at the party, at the cookout, hey. someone's fighting, bro. Yeah. Ch- <laughs> Hey, and bro. if you come to our fucking tailgate, Chingasos, bro. <laughs> you're probably going to be fighting, bro, because you, you're going to fight a bunch of 8.9s, 7.9s. <laughs> yeah, dog. And that cooler we had, no hey. doubt. What do you think the value of that cooler was? A million dollars. It was pushing $400 a beer, right? That <laughs> That's that a million dollar ice chest, bro. <laughs> yeah, it was gold plating, bro. That was a Master P ice chest. That shit never, and that shit never went below half. Never that that ice chest Never. was always full or half full. Never what? below the half What's full up, point, fool? bro. What's up, fool? Hey, shout out to everybody that came out and saw that ice chest in person. Yeah. Y'all know what what the deal is, man. Like uh, Silky Slim will tell you about it. Silky Slim was there. Silky Slim was there. You gent was there. Gent was there. You know the good doc was there. He's not in the chat today. Nug, I haven't seen him yet. I believe Nug came through. Nug came through a couple times. I think. Yeah. 
You know who um, we have, you know who we haven't seen is uh his homie dog from uh Utah dog. Um I'm oh blanking on his name. I'm huh? blanking on names right now too. You know exactly who I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Shit. I feel really bad right now. That's probably why we haven't seen him, dog. <laughs> we blame it on the beers. Yeah. We blame it on the beers. I don't know why. Blame I'm it on, on the. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, uh, I mean, everybody, everybody came through, dog. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and, and by the back. way, and by the way, no promises, no promises, but your boys are trying to figure figure things out. Yeah. We're trying to get out there. Yeah. We're trying to see what we can do about being in Vegas this season. Okay. Um, we have a game that we're targeting. <laughs> we're not gonna we're not gonna jump the gun and tell you the that that's the game for sure. But we're ha- we have a game that we're targeting. And we're trying to get out there this season. So as soon as we can confirm one hundred percent without a shadow of a doubt mm-hmm. that we will be there, mm-hmm. y'all will be the first mm-hmm. to fucking know. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be good times. By the way, uh, good times. By the way, Silky Slim said he went to birthday party for his girlfriend's one year old son and did at least eight shots in his honor. <laughs> I'm, sh- I'm sure he appreciates that, bro. <laughs> and um, I, I'm just glad you're still standing, yeah. bro. My yeah. ex still standing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's still standing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, shout out, Mike, man. I'm proud of you, man. That's how you're supposed to represent, <laughs> dog. That's how you're supposed to represent, son. Um, and shout out to Purple and Gold Raider. I don't know if that's a new handle. I don't recognize that, but I, I'm assuming you're a Laker fan. But I, but I see I see what you're doing there. And thanks for hitting the like button. I'm not mad at that, but but I'm going to say this. You could be Purple and Gold Raider. That's cool because that tells me you're LA fan, you're a Laker fan, you're an LA Raider fan. I don't like the purple. I don't like you changing the fucking colors on our fucking emblem, bro. Okay, I'm glad you said it. I don't like that. Mm-hmm. I'm not. The, I'm not one of those guys. Mm-hmm. I want our, our Raider shield black and silver all the time. Or no, <laughs> just saying. Oh, Raider Nook says schedule comes out May, May 12th. <laughs> uh, Raider Nook says, but I'm glad you hit the like button, son. Hell yeah, hell yeah. yeah. Um, all y'all motherfuckers should be doing that. By not, the way, there's not, 34 of you on, and we only got 23 likes right now. A lot of people. Favor for NBA champion? Oh, bro, it's Golden State Warriors. You already know. Hey, hey, we're back, and y'all hate that, and I love that. Um, <laughs> I got love for the Lakers, man. Che already knows. Like, I, I just I, there's no. It wasn't I, always that way, though. It wasn't always that way. No, I, I think you. I think everybody goes through their stage of hating the Lakers, and I've for never, a good reason. I, I've never hated the Lakers. No, no. I see them like the New York Yankees. Like. You can't talk about the NBA without acknowledging the, the Lakers. Bro. That's true. You know, this is true. When people say the NBA. I'm thinking of like the Lakers, the Pistons, the Bulls, the Celtics. Yeah. Shit, the Pacers. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So respect to the Lakers organization, there you man. Go. I mean, there's been so many incredible storylines coming through that organization. Amen. You know? The greats. Yeah. The greats come. I don't from. like their team right now. I don't like the players on the team. Well, I, I don't like the team right now either. And yeah. I'm a fucking Laker fan, bro. Okay. Right. There's a reason why we're not in the fucking playoffs. People are like, you're a Warriors fan. How do you have love for the Lakers? I'm like, you know what? Because there's never been a rivalry. You know? There's this is true. never been a rivalry. When they're good, we're shit. When we're good, they haven't been great. So this is true. You know, this is true. Until that day comes, uh, you know, I have no problem saying that. Yeah. It, it looks like we might be frozen. I don't know if we have internet. Yeah, right I'm seeing that right now. I'm seeing a, a little bit of uh, sputtering on our end. Um, and it just kicked me out of the thing. Let's see real quick. Hopefully you guys can still hear us. Maybe it's just the, the, the video. Um, yeah, it looks like we're connected to the internet. So we're we're just, we're just stuttering a little bit. YouTube's throttling. Uh, (laughs) what else was I going to say? Um, before we got, we got off of that. Um, you were talking about the fact that there's no, there's no real rivalry Mm -hmm. between the Warriors and the Lakers. And this is, this is true. This is true. I would say that there's more of a rivalry between the fan bases because there's a lot of Warriors fans that like to fucking hate on the Lakers. There's a lot of brand new Warriors fans yeah, too. No, there and, is. I, and as a Warrior fan, I will say that <clears throat> hey, I go back to watching the Warriors on KTVU Channel 36, bro. Yeah. Or no, that's not even KT. That's KICU Channel 36. Dog. But Channel three. There you go. There you go. Well, we're all, we're on the topic though. Our boy Nug is in the chat, and I know he hates the Lakers because he's a sack fan. Ah. Uh. 
So with reason. Yeah. With reason. There was a time where I was, I, you know, I really liked the King's style of play, bro. When, um, uh, who was it that was there? Was it Bibby? Bibby, Mike yeah. Bibby, man. I like that squad, bro. Honestly, uh, and and I don't think, and, I, and, I, and I and I think that this that Sacramento was better with Bibby, but I I I like white chocolate, bro. Jason Kidd, J- no Jason oh, Williams, bro. Jason Williams, Jason, yeah. I like Jason He's Williams, bro. That motherfucker was cool as shit, man. He was fresh, bro. Hey, he he changed that organization. Mm-hmm. They were shit, and then he got there. And and fucking people started paying attention to yeah. Sac, and then they made the trade. Yeah. They traded his ass to fucking Memphis or Vancouver, I think, at that point still. And they got Bibby. It solidified their team. Bibby was definitely a more solid, more consistent player shooting wise. He hit more threes and whatnot. But um, y'all still lost. It doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> Roland, Roland Doves wants the name uh, <laughs> as facts. That was, I mean, that's controversial, but those are facts. Those are facts. Um, hey, <laughs> Raider, Roland Doves wants to know the name of this modern terms beer in in the chat. Hey, I'll put it in there. Circular. Wait, where the fuck you go? Yeah, circular displacement, um, which is you know, what happened here? Named because my girth is about the size of this can. So, <laughs> oh, you got the can. Actually, I was like, where the fuck is the can? Actually, named, named after my waistline. <laughs> um, circular displacement. By the way, bro. that's the sound of a gentleman right here. Hey, that's the sound of a man. Working on his drink. Yeah. <laughs> By the way. Yeah. Look at the size. We need to get a fucking a sponsorship from Jack Daniels now, bro. How you going to put that shit on the... Yeah, bro. Jack Daniels. Look at the size of this bottle. Jack Daniels should be a sponsor of a fucking Raider podcast. And no, notice that it's empty. With the black and white label. You know what I'm saying? Who left this bottle with us, bro? I don't know. Listen. We still have bottles from fucking our tailgate. Dude, I got a giant bottle of vodka, and I don't drink vodka, so I don't even know what yeah. to do with that. Y'all motherfuckers can't. The people came through. <laughs> Shout out. Raider Doug says, quit bringing up old shit, <laughs> Yeah, Chris I Weber. Know, bro. It's, it hurts, bro. Chris yeah, Weber never played up to his size, though, man. That's what disappointed me about Weber, in my opinion. <clears throat> um, but, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a fun squad to watch. They were a solid team, bro. Yeah. They were a solid team. Like now, honestly, they they probably should have hey, won the championship. For real, though, that throwback blue jersey, that Kings jersey, it's caught kind of fire, dog. It's caught kind of fire. That baby blue? Yeah. That's when they had Kenny the Jet Smith. <laughs> yeah, dog, no, Kenny Smith. <laughs> They've had some of the greatest smiles in NBA history. Mitch Richmond's smile, bro. Hey. Light up a room, dog. He had hey. a smile on NBA jams, too. He's just. Yeah. He was smiling super fucking big too when he won a championship with the Lakers. Bro, he got like, yeah, for, <laughs> also facts. Damn, bro, you on fire. <laughs> hey, Mitch Richmond got like 57 teeth in his mouth, bro. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. This is facts, bro. I'm Ritter just saying, nugget, I'm just facts. You got Ritter Nugget his feelings it's right now. Facts right, right now. So, by the way, quick review on the Jack Daniels, right? The Sour Mash. Yeah. Definitely comes through. Caramel Notes. It's a classic, man. Bevmo, Rolling Dubs. Bevmo. You know, Jack Daniels is, it's not well. It's not, well, if you find a bar that Jack Daniels is a well drink, I say order the whiskey. Um, Jack Daniels tried and true American original bourbon whiskey. Yeah. It's a good fucking whiskey. It's a dog. good whiskey, bro. And I'm a bourbon guy. Hey. I'll drink scotch, but it's got to be aged. Yeah. And it's got to be a special occasion. You know, you know what's pretty decent bourbon, bro? Mm. And, uh, and I, I didn't, I never even knew about it until I went to uh, visit my homie in New York. Mm. This is years ago now. But uh, Bullet Bourbon, bro. Oh, Bullet Bourbon's good. That's a good bourbon. Yeah, I bro. like the rye. I like the yeah. green bottle. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. what I like. Yeah. We were fucking drinking. That's all we drank the whole time I was there. Oh, I was there for a stuff. week, bro. That's I was there for stuff. a week with him. Yeah. And I, that's all we drink. Michael. Because mm-hmm. if you buy fucking alcohol in New York, bro, you're paying some fucking cash. So it doesn't make no sense for you to buy a beer. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make no sense for you to buy a mixed drink. Mm-hmm. You got to get that shit on the rocks. Yeah. Oh, and that yeah. is all. That's it. That is all. Yeah. That is all. Um. But, so I'm a big bourbon fan. I think this is you can drink it all occasions. You can dress it up. You can dress it down. I love call Kenny Big Burb. Big Burb. <laughs> the Burbs. <laughs> Big Burb. Oh, real quick. Pillaging. Hey. Shout out to Scott S. with the $10 donation. He just Salud, says brother. Raider Salud. Nation for life. And uh, thank you, Diego, for hitting that <clears throat> like button. Hey, what's up, Diego? What's up? Hey. Hey. What's up? What's up? 
Yeah, this is good stuff. I might have to go. Uh, my my go to is Maker's Mark, so I might have to go get me a bottle of Maker's Mark just yeah, for show nights. You know, yeah. yeah, hell yeah. Well, that's why I get my little gentleman drink yeah, on. Get that you know? gentleman drink on, bro. It's just gonna warm you up and fucking mm-hmm. get you real cozy when, when this show ends. You're gonna be able to sleep nice. Like. Sleep real nice. Hell yeah. Let's get back to these draft picks. Oh, real, real quick. <laughs> at, at the beginning of the show, we're going to get to that, but at the beginning of the show, I don't know if anybody cares to hear this, but Raider Nug said the Gary Garlic Festival coming back this year. Hey. Pump the brakes, Nug. I don't know if it's going to be this year. There you go. Typically, the, the festival is the last weekend of August. Um, those of you all know, the last festival we had ended in a mass shooting. Right? Yeah. The festival is Unfortunately. Right, right across the street from my house. I could throw a disc into the festival for my literally because Kenny has that kind of fucking power. I get. I mean, it's not Che power, hey, but it's close. I mean, but both of us are liking in power if we're trying to compare it to some fucking <laughs> disc golf, though. Yeah, professionals, but, bro. But facts, um, it's right there. But we're getting there, okay? So you know when that shit happened, bro. The choppers <laughs> were here. The, the the I had news reporters on on the end of my block. We we were locked down for two weeks. Uh, the cruisers shooting by. Um, you know what I mean? So. It was a pretty wild time, and it sucked to end on that note. Yeah. What's been going on is event insurance in California is $1 million for your event because That's of the wildfires. crazy. Because of the shooting, I've heard the whispers that it's maybe up to $10 million for that, right? Um, That's insane, though. On top of that, our parking situation's fucked. Uh, they've been uh, shuttling people uh, from across town to get in there. I, I walk in, so I'm not really tripping. Uh, I've been going to the festival since I was a kid. Um Scott S says destroyer drive or question mark. I'll probably throw a destroyer, possibly possibly a tempest dog. Shout out to DGA. Shrike destroyer. Or strike. Shrike destroyer. Oh no he! Hey, shout out to Noah. No, he's in the chat. Man. Shout out. 499. Noe, I'm proud of you, dog. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you too. Just letting you know that. Hey, Noe's got some stories of mine, bro. Hey. I was dropping stories on those those. <laughs> Young Bucks. Yeah, you then. were. Yeah. What's up, Young Buck? <laughs> Let me tell you all, Young Bucks, about what life has been like for me. It always has been and always will be about buckets. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, but basically, uh, we we basically canceled the Garlic Festival indefinitely. A festival that started in 79, 80. Uh, so I've been going my whole life. Uh, it's a big part of our town. We raise a lot of money for charity, yeah. organizations, nonprofits, schools in town, and we just have a blast. My daughter's been every single year of her life, without mm. a doubt. Um, but San Joaquin Valley or San Joaquin County, there you go. they host the Asparagus Festival, which I guess is a big festival for them. Uh, they caught wind of this. They said, no, that's not going to happen. They're going to take over and help the Garlic Festival Foundation here put it on maybe out there. I don't know where it's going to be. I don't know that it happens this year. Um, but, yeah, I appreciate that, Stockton. Um, I really do appreciate that. So, yeah. Yeah, Scott, we do throw the G-Star destroyers. We throw Yeah, them we out throw them motherfuckers for, we're, for distance. We're throwing them out there today. We're getting them out there. I was turning them bitches over, bro. Yeah, we were getting them out there 325, 350. It was windy uh, as hell. The today. wind was not working in our favor. I will say that. I put, I put a couple out. 365, 370 today. Yeah, you did. But I, li- I like Heiser flipping that Tempest to 350. That's, there you go. That's my sweet spot. But uh, that's yeah. another podcast, by the way. Yeah, it's coming your way soon. Maybe elevated T. Maybe it's called courtesy violation. <laughs> we'll we'll bounce that around. <laughs> Footfall. Footfall. Foot fucking footfall. <laughs> um, anyways, I'm on <laughs> multiple topics right now, but the. Uh, what I'm trying to say is I'm really happy that it's possible it comes back. And I, I wish it could be in Gilroy, but because of political things, maybe it can't be for a while. Uh, but it's a big part of my life. It's a big part of our culture out here, and it's just a great thing. It is the second largest outdoor food festival in America. So it's kind of a big deal. We bring 90,000 people go to the festival every single mm-hmm. year. And the money's good. Yeah. And the beer is cold. The beer is cold, bro. Hell yeah. I got a tin cup for like every year I've ever been there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, little, little Moscow Mule, did. little Moscow Mule. I got those, and I got the beer ones. Yeah. The Moscow Mules are, are new, uh, but yeah, those, those, that's pretty fly. Uh, Moscow yeah. Mule is refreshing on a hot day. Yeah, absolutely, I, I bro. That. Absolutely. Um, and even though I don't drink vodka, pretty nice. I, I would like to have. Well, I'm a gin guy myself, which is basically vodka that tastes like Christmas. <laughs> it's true, <laughs> bro. pretty much. Fucking pine cones. <laughs> yeah, like, dog. I love bro, that. 
I've never been able to acquire that taste, bro. Oh, I love it. But yeah. when I'm fucking, hey, if I've been drinking, if you're smacked, bring, yeah. hey, bring the gin on, bro. I like bring the, the gin, gin and tonic, and I like myself a little Bombay Sapphire <laughs> Martini. Bombay, the Bombay, it's that man. Bombay. <laughs> <laughs> but I like it shaking too, because I like that sheet of ice on top, bro. And I don't like it Eight. dirty, but I like a lot of olives in it. Eight. Don't fuck up my good gin with fucking olive juice, bro. No. Take the training wheels off that shit, Eight, dog. No. Yeah. no, no, no. Just put the olives in there, man. Yeah. That's why I want to eat them bitches. Hell yeah. That's, Hell yeah. Yeah, that's salty. To, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But right now we're drinking fucking yeah. Jack Daniels, dog. And I'm drinking beer, mm-hmm. as per usual. Salud. All right, let's get back to it. I mean, I might need another one. Todd, 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 hey. Todd, 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 Let's get after Todd. it. You might need it. You brought two up here. It was no, I, I only brought one up this time. Uh, I should have brought two. Well, it's eight point nine, so technically you did. You brought two. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> it's a two for one deal. It's true, bro. All right, uh, another fantastic pick in this draft. Yeah, it's Matthew Butler. Yeah, in a, the fifth round. In the fifth round, at a Tennessee one, two, three, four, fifth, <laughs> fifth round, son. <laughs> Go ahead. The fifth. <laughs> Six foot four, 295 pounds. They might as well call this guy Meatloaf because he comes like a bat out of hell, bro. <laughs> I've seen this guy just jumping in out the, out the frame. Like, where the fuck did this guy come from, hey, dude? This, hey, it's true. There's a, there's a couple of plays we saw where, I don't know, he was, he was either like sitting back, maybe in coverage. And he saw that car- quarterback not fucking being decisive at all. And he was like, I'm going to get in that ass hey. right now. Pow! 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 <laughs> Are you saying pow? Pow! Pow! My gin comment brought someone out the woodwork because I'd never seen this handle before. <laughs> Rainbow Bubbles Unicorn War Machine. That's the name. And then the comment is gin is for real gangsters, bro. <laughs> I want to know how Rainbow Bubbles Unicorn War Machine... <laughs> knows about some real gangster shit. <laughs> kind of got me scared, bro. Said Jim Fire, Bombay Sapphire, all day. Fuck yeah, dog. And it's a it's a pretty hey. bottle. But I respect that comment and I respect that name. It's the hey. War Machine that sends it over the edge. The War Machine. You got me kind of nervous, bro. Yeah. Because that's kind of a scary, happy, scary name. That's yeah. But back to Matthew Butler out of Tennessee. <laughs> <It's> dog. Like <laughs> this cat Matthew Butler, bro, is fast. Quick, real fast. Quick with it. And he doesn't care if you're hurt or not, bro. Mm-mm. This kid is, and I'm happy. He's a defensive tackle that hits. Happy like, that he that, has no sensitivity to your fucking injuries, bro. Bro, he hits like Jonathan <laughs> Abram, dog. He does. He comes downhill. Yeah. Out, out of where? I don't know, dude. He's coming in like a linebacker. You bro. already said it, bro. Out of hell, bro. Bat out of hell, bro. Out of hell. He comes in like a linebacker. I like it. Like he wasn't even on the line to begin with. Yeah. Like, they sent him in after the play. Like, he got fucking full head of steam before he even got to the Yeah, line. dude. How does that yeah. work, bro? Yeah. I need to see some, some, I need to see some top-down film on Matt Butler. This is true. This is true. We, we, need, we, de- we, need, we need more film on all these guys. We already know. Like, unless you, unless you have full game footage and you got hours upon hours to, like, watch that shit. You're going to be super limited when you go to look for film on these guys. Yeah, but yeah. the shit that we saw, and we saw them playing these games against good teams, good fucking schools. Yeah. All these guys. Mm-hmm. This motherfucker is solid, bro. And oh. what I liked about this guy, too, is I saw the interview after he was drafted. And they were asking him, you know, your fifth round pick. Like, what is your, like, what's your goal? Pain. And his he's <laughs> shout out Mr. T. <laughs> shout out Mr. T. Pain. Shout out Mr. T. No. <laughs> <laughs> but he said real like real eloquently too, bro. This guy was he spoke well. He he does really well in terms of fucking speaking and on camera and, and all that good shit. That's real professional. But he was like, look, at the end of the day, they're gonna look back on this class and they're going to decide who was the best pick out of this class. Mm-hmm. And my plan is to be that guy. Mm. That's the kind of shit you want to hear from, from you guys. Because when you, when you, it's, it's one thing to think it, mm-hmm. keep that shit to yourself. Mm-hmm. But when you're putting it out into the world, yeah. 
Now you gotta own up to that shit. Cajones, bro. Yeah. Now you got some balls. And now you gotta back now you gotta back that shit up. Because because people are gonna eat your ass up Mm -hmm. when you say that shit out loud. But the fact that he has the confidence in himself, in his abilities, in his talent to say, I plan to be the guy that everybody says was the best defensive fucking lineman out of this draft. The fact that he thinks of himself that way. Coming out in the fifth round, mm-hmm. that's all I need to hear. Now I just need to see the work. Get after it, son. Because what we saw on film, you jumped off the fucking film. Fuck yeah. You jumped off the film. Like the silver surfer, bro. Hell yeah, dog. In quarterbacks' asses, dog. Uh, up in that ass all day. All up in that ass. Get up in that ass, Larry. <laughs> all up in that ass. Man. Matthew Butler, what's your outlook for the 2022 season? Bang! Quick step, man. Quick first step. He's getting by. He's he doesn't even have to use a whole lot of hand movement to get by these fucking these offensive linemen. Yeah, that's what we noticed the most about him. Before you knew it, this motherfucker was two three yards in the backfield and getting after. He was passed and rounding the corner and getting towards the quarterback immediately. And at 320 pounds, bro, he, there's no gut on this guy. No, he's a slim dude, man. He's But 320, but, dog? Mu- but oh, no, muscle. wait, 295, 295. But muscle, bro. But muscle. Yoked, bro. But muscle. I like it, bro. He's I this, like I like bro, what he did here. He's, he's this big. Yeah. He's look this fucking this is a big ass bottle, bro. <laughs> Kenny goes he's going to go sleep with that bottle. Empty though, dog. <laughs> Y'all think I don't drink? Fuck you. <laughs> keep, it, keep it quiet, bro. No, he's just he's just making sure that he's drinking something that is not against his diet now. Bang! That's it, man. Yeah. I got to get the weight down, bro. Yeah, I down. blew up during the pandemic. Everybody yeah. did, bro. Fuck. Everybody did. Yeah. Everybody did. I blew up too, man. I yeah. blew up too. I slimmed down, but I blew up during the pandemic. Yeah. Came out of the pandemic, I was like, mm, got to get back in shape. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Salads. Salads and disc golf. Salads and disc golf. <laughs> I'm in crush on some salads. It's all about, son. Yeah, I just... Great thing about my, my nutrition plan is I love it. It's like easy. I like it. I just can't get I lazy. It. You know, I want some more, more of, of it. it. Stop it, bro. <laughs> why, why, why'd you pull that one out? That's going to be stuck in my fucking head Because you said now. I love it, bro. That's yeah. why. <laughs> There's only so many directions you can go with that shit. So. You son of a bitch. <laughs> Cheers. You're lying. I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt Butler, man. Uh, fucking bat out of hell. That's my review on Matt That's Butler. That's it, man. I don't know. I didn't see. We didn't see as much film on Butler because what we saw was fucking amazing. They, this, this motherfucker was the real deal. Mm-hmm. And I want to see. I want to see tape, though. Uh, not the highlights. We couldn't find tape on him. Right. That's true. This is true. So this is we, true. We gotta see the low light. We got. Well, I mean, we gotta pull up game footage. You gotta pull up a game, and, and like I said, we we don't have all the hours of the fucking day yeah. to do that kind of research right now. Um, and I I probably won't ever for at least another fucking year and a half. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. I'm where's, just saying for the next two years. Yeah, my time's limited. Where's, where's Bionic Raider? I want to know what Bionic Raider thinks. Oh, that, that dude watches a lot of films. That's bro. true, man. That guy's That's a draft nut. And David Franklin, you're here. It seems like I mean, you got check out the big brains on David Franklin. Hey, put it in the chat. Uh, excuse me, put it in the chat. What do you think of Matt Butler? Because um, highlights yeah. look fucking amazing, but I've been duped by highlights before. This is true. This um, is true. You know, but listen, I I think both of these guys have the characteristics. They tell you they're going to work. Yeah. They're going to work. And two things that stood out about both Farrell and Butler, there's no quit. Mm -hmm. They're playing beyond the whistle. Yeah. And anybody that's played fucking football or any sport for that matter, number one thing that coaches always fucking remind you is, you play to the fucking whistle. Mm-hmm. Like I don't want to see anybody dragging ass or stopping on a play because they think it's yeah. dead. Like you play to the motherfucking whistle. And if you're a raider, sometimes you play after that. You play after the whistle. <laughs> so welcome to the raiders. <laughs> but the, both these motherfuckers play to the fucking whistle and beyond. Sometimes, man, they they get after it. There's no quit. 
You don't see anybody taking a playoff. I didn't see any of that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did not see any of that shit. Yeah. And you can see that with other players. Mm-hmm. You'll see a guy that's a stud that fucking gets after it, gets after it, gets after it, and then he just takes a playoff. Let, let me get a little rest right here. Let yeah. me get a little breather. Yeah. Right? We've seen that some, with some pretty prominent motherfucking players. Mm-hmm. These kids, they're hungry. And coming in as a fucking fourth round and a fifth round pick, they're even more hungry to prove themselves because they think they should have gone in the first round. Mm-hmm. I truly do believe that. They think they're that kind of talent. So come out, show that shit on the field, get paid, son. Get paid. Come get paid. Put some fucking production on the field. Yeah. You're going to get paid. Yeah. You're going to get paid. What I can say from what I've seen, and uh, this is just me guessing, right? This is just me kind of throwing it out there. I don't feel like Butler's going to play the run well. I think he's a pass rush DT. I, I, I think he's a pass rush DT right? uh, also. I yeah. can see him maybe the play gets behind him too much. I can see him so anxious to get to the quarterback that he's going to get move, run past a running back. Right? These are just... Uh, I don't see that from Farrell, though. No, 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 no. Farrell's no. not that guy. He plays both. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but Butler, the, definitely the lightning to Farrell's thunder. Mm-hmm. Uh, great combo. And maybe Butler's like a third down DT. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Pass rush. I mean, you get Butler, Farrell, well, Crosby, look. Jones. So we're we're moving to a three four, right? Yeah. So, but uh, jo- but yeah, but yeah. but Jones is a linebacker. We'll be in the nickel more than the three four, but but yes. but we're but we but Jones is a linebacker. Mm. So it's a it's a fake three four. That's how I like to look at it. Maybe, maybe because you have a linebacker yeah. that really is playing defensive end. Okay. And if you look over at San Diego and they got fucking Khalil Mack, they're probably going to keep him at list, listed as fucking linebacker, right? Like Chicago had him. But we already know Khalil Mack's not a fucking linebacker. He ain't getting out in coverage. He ain't fucking covering the flats. He's pro- fucking rushing the quarterback. All pro at both positions. That's a defensive end. That's a defensive end. Yeah. But I'm going to say this. Thank you, Khalil Mack, for being listed as a linebacker because every time that I did my fantasy draft and yeah. somebody fucking took you, I laughed my ass off yeah. because you don't put up linebacker numbers. <laughs> yeah. You put up fucking defensive end numbers. It's very limited, and my boys fucking suffered for it. Hey. Uh, shout out. <laughs> um, what I do like about Farrell in the 3-4, we've seen him play the nose tackle on tape, and he crushing that position mm-hmm. as well. So Max Crosby, uh, Farrell, and then... Um, this is what you got. You got a Crosby, Farrell, Butler, Butler, Jones, Ch- Chandler Jones, Chandler Jones, <laughs> Chandler Jones, <laughs> Chandler Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Hey. Back then, they didn't want me. No, huh? they, they don't, don't want, want me. me. <laughs> Shout out to Dipset, bro. <laughs> no, bro. Yep. No, that was Dipset, bro. This, those motherfuckers from. Oh, you talking about? Uh, you talking about Mike Jones? That's Mike Jones. I was thinking huh? Jim Jones. He's no, dip, not Jim Jones. Jim yeah, Jones. Jim, Dipset, Jim, yeah. Jim Jones. Dipset. Mike, Mike Jones. Mike Jones, right, Mike Jones yeah, and fucking uh, what's what's the white dude, man? Uh, Paul Wall. Paul Wall, yeah. son. Paul Wall was nice, dog. Katie Bate, bro. Yeah. Paul Wall was nice, that bro. Was all about that. When he was on that second Kanye record, that was a dope ass song. That right, was, slow. That's that a dope was ass that was. It was a dope-ass track. Bro, Candy Paint was a fucking dope-ass song, too, bro. Yeah, it was. I was like, yeah, Paul Wall's dope. He's, he's a jeweler, man. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's a baller. Yeah, yeah. Paul Wall. Shout That's how he, he slimmed down, too, bro. Dope-ass grills, bro. He's one of those dudes that slimmed down and looks hella weird. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's a lot of those motherfuckers. Yeah, he looks a little better as a chubby Look at boy. Al Roker. <laughs> yeah, uh, with his big-ass head. <laughs> Imagine if Nick Doss lost weight with his big-ass fucking head, bro. Nick, Nick Doss looking like fucking... Like a motherfucking lollipop, looking like, bro. looking like, uh, <laughs> like a fuck, like a fucking, like a fucking cotton candy, bro. Looking like, <laughs> looking like Bobby Hill, bro. Looking like Bobby Hill up in the booth, dog. Oh, looking like hey. the grandpa, dude. Hey. <laughs> fuck Nate Dog. Uh, <laughs> that's strong words, bro. Hey. Shit, I will. Why f- you so hateful? I will fight Nate Dog, bro. <laughs> Why? Why are you so? Why are you so upset at this? Let me, let me get idiot, some background, bro. bro. Let's get some background here. <laughs> hey, y'all can Google that shit, bro. <laughs> Fuck me, Doss, bro. Oh shit! Ken Climo should have whooped your ass, bro. <laughs> should have mopped your ass up with his ears and shit. <laughs> the big ass ears beating you up, bro. 
It's a whole it. other people don't even know what we, we're talking about. Except for fucking uh right, except me, for uh was that Scott S? Yeah, Scott S Scott S knows. Sorry. Scott S knows. Hey. Hot, 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 <laughs> hot, 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 hot. <laughs> Round seven. Fight. Offensive tackle. Fair Munford Jr. If that's, hey. not, it's not, that's not a southern name. I don't know, bro. Hey. Ohio State, six foot six, three hundred and twenty pounds. Yeah. Yeah. Big boy. He's a big boy, man. You know what I like about Thayer Munford Jr.? His hands, dog. The hands don't stop moving. I like that. Hitting that speed like that. bag, That's bro. a good call. Hitting That's that good sp- call. He's breaking wrists, bro. Hitting that speed bag. He, he keeps he keeps acti- He has active hands. That's the best yeah. way to describe Thayer Munford. Um, obviously, he's a seventh-round pick, okay? But when he was drafted... Um, some of the guys that were on the fucking on on that fucking call, you know, some of the announcers were talking about he might be starting at right tackle. Okay, obviously we already know we have an issue at right tackle. Mm-hmm. We've been discussing that since the start of the show. Mm-hmm. Okay, we talked about that early, real early on. Parker is not the solution. Nobody's happy with him. We got good waiting in the wings. We don't know. What what the plan is for him? We know that he can be solid if you fucking put him if you lock him in, yeah. right? And he stays healthy. I don't know if Munford and Son is the answer though, because <laughs> we've seen some low lights, bro. We did see some and low it lights. Was bad. We did see some low lights. He was getting put on his ass. Yeah, bro. we did see some low lights. But let me say this: he gets, um, gets out of position maybe a little too easy. So one of the things that um, that was mentioned when he was drafted was that he had played guard this last season. Yeah. And they were saying that he looked a lot better at tackle. He looked a lot better at tackle than he did at guard. But because of Ohio State being a high-profile fucking, you know, uh, college and and getting a lot of fucking high-level talent, you know, they're always shifting linemen around. They're always making them fucking play multiple positions. Which isn't a bad thing because if you come into the NFL, you've played fucking guard, you played center, you played tackle. You know you have you have a lot more viability. You have more reason to be drafted, mm-hmm. right, as an offensive lineman because there's possibility for you fit in wherever there's a need. Yeah, right. Um, but the 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 consensus is he's a much better tackle mm-hmm. than he is a guard. Mm-hmm. And now I'm okay with that. Yeah. Because I feel like the guards are locked in. Yeah. Like I said that at the beginning of the show, we have Samson Simpson. Yeah. Okay. He's locked in. That's our left guard. Yeah. Okay. Richie Incognito's never coming back. No. Nope. He's gone. He's He might, yeah. might as well announce his retirement. Yeah. Okay. He never came back last season. He fucking was lost the whole fucking season before that. Mm-hmm. We're not seeing Richie Incognito come back no more, man. No. And even if he does decide that he wants to stay in the league, mm-hmm. I don't think he plays anymore. No. I don't think so. But shout out because you got Colton Miller up to speed. You Hell his, yeah, man. You had his back when he needed you. Absolutely. And now he stands on his Absolutely. own. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And shout out to you for making that change in your fucking personality. Yeah, you homie. get to walk away from the game with some dignity now. Yeah. You know? when, and with fucking people appreciating you again. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know yeah. what I'm saying? Love that. So shout out man i i love richie i when he came over I, we were questionable on him like i don't know about this dude but he came in and he proved himself to be a fucking valuable vet i wasn't questionable on him a valuable vet. i'll be the first one to tell you a uh, uh, nfl locker room is not the place to go looking for political this correct is true. behavior this bro. is true bro. i don't give a fuck i don't this care if true. it's right or wrong any football locker room is not the place to no. go fucking looking for political correctness because you're gonna hear a lot of fucking shit bro yeah I'm just saying there's a lot of grab ass i played high there, school bro. football and that's that was fucking yeah real politically incorrect i'm just saying just I'm saying just, just saying but and Mumf- most of it was our coach yeah. but mumford is- <laughs> mumford is son shout out I don't know, man. This pick is probably the one I'm least high on. I think right now he's a body. He's going to compete. He's in there. I, I don't see him cracking the, the lineup. You know? I think there's potential, and I think he's a four-year fucking player. Okay. So that's good. he has experience, yeah. right? You know, Ohio State. He's been allowed to develop you know? in a high-level school. Yeah. He's gone up against a lot of NFL talent mm-hmm. because he's played for fucking Ohio State, right? 
So all that's there. It's in his benefit. Yeah. Is he jumping off the field as like this guy that you're like, holy shit, we got this guy. He's going to fucking just slide right in at right tackle and fucking dominate. No. no. But he has potential to become a very, very solid fucking tackle. Now, it's up to you, dog. You got drafted in the seventh round. Some motherfuckers don't get drafted. Okay? Think about that. Mm-hmm. So what are you going to do? Yeah. You're going to come into this fucking team and say, oh, man, I got drafted in the seventh round and feel bad for yourself? You're going to be like, I got drafted in the seventh round? Fuck that. I don't feel bad for you, son. I should be a fucking first round draft pick. Yeah. Okay? And go out there and bust your ass. Because you know what? We got some guys on this team that did that. Mm -hmm. Okay? We do. Go ask Max Crosby. Go ask him. Got drafted in the third round. Condor. Fuck that. Condor. Yeah. You got that Condor tattoo now, too. Yeah. That's hot. That's that motherfucker got a lot of tattoos, bro. He does. Dog. He got a Raider <laughs> tattoo, and that's the only one I He's give got, a shit about. He just got a tattoo the other day, bro. He got a tattoo that says, kill or be killed oh, on his shit. fucking thigh. Oh, shit. Yeah. I was going to go get Man. a tattoo, and they told me Max Crosby had them all. <laughs> <laughs> Max Crosby got that one, bro. I don't think he wants that one. Todd, 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 Todd. Let's move on to the final pick of the 2022 NFL Draft. Yeah, round seven, running back Britton Brown. And we said to wait for this one. We at, told y'all out of UCLA. Wait for this one. Six foot one. He, all right, I got I got my two, hand on the button, son. Two hundred and five pounds. Let that fucking hot take fire, bro. Was all right, right off the bat, let it fire, bro. It's my hot take. Britton Brown is going to take snaps away from Zamir White. Oh shit! Yeah, you heard it here. I said that. Now I'll, I here. will die on that hill. I understand the risk. That's why it's a hot take. <laughs> if it wasn't risky, it wouldn't be hot. It wouldn't be hot at all. It'd be fucking timid, bro. It'd I under- be fucking mild. I understand this guy plays out the, in the Pac-12. Mm-hmm. Go watch his tape versus LSU. Mm-hmm. This dude put it down their fucking throat. I mean, him yeah. and and uh, what's his, his uh, teammate's name, 24? I don't remember. Uh, we didn't draft him, bro. It doesn't matter. We, yeah, <laughs> he ain't a Raider. So I don't give a fuck. It doesn't matter. Brayton Brown gets downhill, bro. Yeah, he does. And he's getting downhill through. He's running off guard. Yeah, he's running down the middle of that line, and that dude is streaking. Mm-hmm. You know, and at two hundred five pounds, doesn't sound that huge. He's got power. Involved in the pass game too. That stiff arm is pretty wicked. Mm-hmm. Involved in the pass game, heavily involved in the pass game. Crisp, fluid, catching balls on the run. Something that Derek Carr can't do anyways. Getting extra, extra yards, <sighs> extra yards. Britton Brown, to me, jumped off the tape more than Zamir White. And I like Zamir White. Everything we said about him is true. Not exaggerating. Stay centered. In control of his body, like Chase said. With the cut, Britton Brown gets 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 south real quick. North-south runner fast, there bro. You go. There you go. Gets out to the sideline. Puts that big hand in your face. You know what? Get the fuck out the way. You know what's fucking funny? So, Zamir put a 4-4-40. Four, four, okay. Brent Brown came in at a 4-6, but he looked quicker on film. He did. Right? Way faster. He looked like he was running away from people. Yeah. The shit that we were talking about that and, we didn't see from And Zeus. through them. Yeah. Running through them, fucking people were peeled off, peeling off of him, bro. Yeah. Multiple fucking cornerbacks, fucking defensive backs just peeling off of him, and he's just grinding. Just keep keep them fucking legs pumping. You could- you gonna back my take or, or I'm backing your take, bro. Back I, I I think you with that. I like it, bro. I, I like it. It's a hot take. I'm too. gonna hit the button one more time. It's, it's a hot take, bro. It's a hot take it's because hot. for a fucking seventh rounder to possibly take fucking take more snaps than than the first running back we took, which was in the fourth round. That's a hot take, dog. That's a hot take. But I'm not mad at it. I think um what we saw on film mm. says it's mm. very, very possible. Mm-hmm. And this is this goes back to what Ziegler and McDaniel said. Competition. Mm-hmm. Okay? Because, yeah, we took this motherfucker in the seventh round. That don't mean that we ain't going to fucking play him. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean that because we took this guy in the fourth round that we're going to favor him. No. It's about who's going to fucking show that they deserve the time. Mm-hmm. It's about who's going to show they deserve the fucking ball. Mm-hmm. And if Brim Brown goes out there and busts his ass and he puts on some fucking highlights in practice like he did on fucking film, what we saw, don't be surprised, y'all. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. 
And that's no fucking that's that's no fucking dirt. We're not throwing any dirt on Zeus's name because what we saw on film was solid too. Yeah. But that was just a little spark that we saw from fucking Britain Brown that we were like, oh shit. Okay. So Okay. I'm not saying this year. Yeah. But next year, possibly. Brian Brown is going to take Josh Jacobs' role, right? And Zeus takes Kenyon Drake's role. And that's going to be your one, two. Uh, I think it's the other way around. The other way around? I think it's the other way I around. See, I just see I Brown feel like being a I more feel, physical. But that, I, I feel First like, down back. Well, I think he peels off of a lot of fucking people, but let's look at who's he's, who he's peeling off of. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, what I saw, I saw him peeling off of a lot of defensive backs. Fair enough. What I see fucking Zeus doing is going fucking... And getting three, four extra yards against linebackers. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like Zeus fits more of the role of Josh Jacobs. And I think that fucking okay. Britton Brown fills more of the, the okay. role of uh, Drake, bro. Okay. And that being said, I'm going to take a fucking bathroom break. And we've we seen him involved in more uh, the passing game than we watched, than we saw on tape with, with Zeus. But I don't know because I didn't follow these guys' careers. So that could be way off. On yeah. I'm just going to say. Yeah. But yeah. Can we we'll, take a little break real quick? Yeah, let's take a short let's, break. Let's take a real break. Bro. Yeah, we'll be back. Yeah. You're not twisting one up, hey, or you know, banging your lady really hard. <laughs> <in the> music. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing. I don't know what you're doing with your life. I don't know what you're doing with your life. You know, <laughs> or do or both, or both, bro. I hey, mean, do not, all three, bro. You know, hey, shit. I know when I twist one up, it's, <laughs> it's about to get fucking freaky, bro. <laughs> Hey, you know what I mean, hey man, live like, your life. Bro. I like to get weird, bro. Live your life. I like to get weird. Get weird, son. So, Ain't nothing wrong with it, bro. So Britton Brown, man. Watch That's a great man. thing about finding uh finding the, the right person for you, bro. You know what I mean? You find the right person, you get weird as as, as weird as you. Well, fucking I, I'm going weird with a lot of people, bro. This is true. But yeah, this is when, true. It's that, weird, that, when you with the right person, is 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 you can stay weird. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> that relationship <laughs> sex, man. It's the best, dog. And consistent. Yeah. That's that that stranger <laughs> stuff. I mean, it's I think it's exciting more than it's quality. Yeah. You know what I mean? But when you know somebody, that's just high quality, dog. It is. You're right. It's turning into crow's nest real fast. You're right. <laughs> it's turning into the crow's nest. Um, <laughs> we should get some donations for this kind of shit, bro. I know. You're getting two shows in one. Guess right what? Now. We don't we don't have any phone You're calls. You're getting three bro. shows in one, bro. The first time we don't have any phone calls. Damn, right. nobody wants to call in right now. Uh, I'll t- I'll turn all the do not disturb off. Somebody wants to call in live. The phone line is now open. Y'all my phone is calling live right 408 now. 909 PJFF four eight nine zero nine seven five three. Call in. Otherwise, I'm gonna talk about whooping Nate Doss's ass <laughs> for the next fifteen minutes. Hey, hey b- let me just say this. Fuck Nate Doss, bro. <laughs> Right? Man, you're real angry at that guy, right? He's a fucking lame, bro. <laughs> Have you heard his commentary, dude? It's pretty bad. It's garbage, it's dog. Fuck, it's, it's pretty car- corny and shit, bro. That is, but that's just, that's just that, that coverage in general. Uh, yeah. That coverage in general is pretty bad. The man. shot with the potato, bro. Sh- shout out to Philo, bro, because he's the yeah. only cat that I really dig mm-hmm. on that fucking coverage, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's oh, bad. With, with a name like Philo Brathwaite, bro. Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. I want to hear some fucking cuss words coming out of Philo's fucking. You see that shit, dog? <laughs> he wears them high hats. See that shit. Those are real high hats. Yeah, bro. it's because he got them braids. He got them fucking braids. Why does he sound like he's from Indiana when he's from L.A., bro? 
Is he from LA? Yeah, he's from LA. No shit. He's from down there. Yeah. Uh, you know what would be dope is if like smoke. as they fucking as they smoke yeah. one with Philo. Every smoke one with Philo for <laughs> yeah, sure. That would you be know dope. he smokes one for sure, oh, bro. Yeah, you know dope. he smokes one. But it would be dope. But they'll never do this because uh-huh. that coverage is fucking corny as hell. <laughs> yeah. If they fucking brought his ass in with some fucking L.A. hip hop, bro. You know what I mean? That'd be tight. Some motherfucking Snoop Dogg, some fucking Dre, some N.W.A., a fucking game. Yeah. Some Kendrick. Oh, some game. Oh, shit. Hey, that new Kendrick's about to drop, too. I know, bro. May, May 13th. I know. Yeah. I've big, been waiting on that big shit. Big steppers, bro. Kung Fu Kenny. That shit's going to be wild, bro. The last one, I don't think he's pulling any punches, Mm-mm. bro. I think it's going to be hella weird, bro. He's going to go super weird, and there's going to be a bunch of people that hate on his ass, mm-hmm. and he ain't going to give a fuck. And we're going to eat it up, though. We're going to eat it up because we're like, this motherfucker is the greatest rapper can, alive right now. He can do no wrong. That motherfucker, hey. Man. I think he's the greatest rapper of all time. He's he put motherfuckers to sleep, son. Yeah. He's putting motherfuckers it, to sleep. And with all due respect. In a fucking be, headlock, choking because, people be, out. Because without cats, like... Uh, you know, um, Killer Mike, Mike Nine, Rakim. Without cats like him, Kendrick doesn't exist. Absolutely, but Kendrick does exist. Mm-hmm. And and I really think, um, I think he's the greatest rapper of all time. And I thought it was strange that I found him in my thirties mm-hmm. and said that because mm-hmm. I never thought I'd say that. And listen, yeah, y'all looking at Kenny, you might be looking at Ke- Kenny with some fucking like. But you haven't listened to Kendrick's music. But, Ken, the, but Kenny's, let me just say this. Your knowledge of hip hop is up there, bro. High, yeah. t- higher, highest tier. Okay. Like yeah. your knowledge and your, your ability to fucking call out rap. Like this, Kenny's got, got all the facts, knowledge. Facts, bro. Facts. Okay. Kenny's got, let me hit you with that. Fucking. Those are facts. You, Kenny's got all the hip hop knowledge. Okay. So if you guys doubt what Kenny's saying right now, you're like, oh, I don't know about that shit, Kenny. No, Kenny knows what he's talking I've about. I've done my research, He's bro. fucking, he, he'll light your ass up with fucking hip-hop facts. Mm-hmm. That's a fact, okay? I agree with him, 100%. Like, for me, fighting Kendrick, like you said, damn, I'm damn near 40. Kendrick's the best fucking rapper right now in existence, and... There's absolutely no reason why you can't say that he's fucking greatest rapper of all time because go and look at his fucking albums, bro. Yeah. Bro, name me another fucking rapper that fucking won the Nobel Prize. The Nobel Prize, bro. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck, <laughs> son? Come on now. And he, he deserved it for the album previous. A- absolutely. He deserved it for To Pimp a Butterfly. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. He, he got it for damn. He got it for damn mm-hmm. because people were like, oh, we fucked that up. We fucked that up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Kendrick is a is is a cat that's fucking on his own fucking he's on his own tier right now. He's on another planet. He's on his own fucking tier, bro. His live performances. Oh man. And and we were talking about this last night. Mm-hmm. And we're talking about now he's getting his acting chops on and shit, whatever. You know, yeah, like that scene in power was nuts. Bro. That shit was nuts, bro. Yeah. But yeah. listen, Ken, that's that's what makes Kendrick's music so fucking like real. <laughs> David Franklin says MC Hammer greatest baggy trousers of all time. That's, this is true. That's a fact. This is true. And, and MC Hammer is not to be fucked with, bro. Oh no. The most dangerous man in hip hop. <laughs> and you may be shocked to find that out. <laughs> But that man had a thirty-five thousand dollar bounty on MC Search's head, and it was real. Ooh. On MC Search, bro. Yeah, dude. Damn. And and Redman dissed Hammer, shows up to a, a show in Oakland, mm-hmm. said it was packed out. Yeah. Till he realized there was probably about eighty people there from Hammer's camp, and it was not a comfortable situation. <laughs> Did his set and bounced, and straight from Redman's mouth. MC Hammer is the most dangerous man in hip hop. He says you do not fuck with Hammer, hey, because you are fucking with all of Oakland. The, the, and, and there you go. And now so yeah. there, there's the point that needed to be made. Say what you want about it's MC crazy. Hammer's music. <laughs> Say what you want about what he was talking about. Say about what you want about his fucking flashy ass suits and his baggy ass fucking pants and his fucking chest all out there with fucking you know in mm-hmm. the fucking curls and the fucking. 
MC Hammer's from Oakland. <laughs> yeah, he's from Oakland, bro. That motherfucker's, he, motherfucker's from Oakland, yeah. son. Okay? He was having a good time. He was showing you, like, this is me when I'm happy. Mm-hmm. I'm dancing. I'm singing. I'm fucking spinning. I'm doing all this shit. Mm-hmm. But he's from fucking Oakland. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. You think motherfuckers from Oakland play? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When you look He'll at find out. And when you look at his, find out. his work ethic and uh It's like James Brown, bro. He's James Brown. He modeled that's, himself after James that's Brown. That's exactly where I was going with that. Yeah. He James modeled Brown. himself after James Brown. Crazy dude. Bro, you remember the fucking MC Hammer cartoon? Yeah, dude. Hammerman. Hammer and and <laughs> whose shoes did he fucking wh- which were the magic shoes? The fucking was like the, the They talked and shit. Yeah, yeah. But they were fucking James, James Brown. Brown's shoes. <laughs> yeah. And he fucking had him on. That's how he dances. He dances his ass off, sir. Yeah. Hell yeah. Shout out to that cartoon, bro. That was a fucking throwback right bro, there. He went after Michael Jackson, bro. Bro. <laughs> bro. That's crazy, dog. Hey, That's let's crazy, let's just be bro. real, man. It, Hammer has some moves, bro. He all oh, even could dance. Hammer yeah, has some sure, moves. Sure. Sure. They're still doing moves that fucking Hammer did, yeah. son. The Running Man, bro. They yeah. still re- they're still trying to fucking give that shit a whole bunch yeah. of different names, and they're just. Reintroducing it, yeah. These motherfucking millennials, bro. Get book, get book. Hey, get book, get book, get book. Get book. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, rem- I remember when that video was coming out. Yeah, <laughs> MTV News was promoing that shit for like two weeks, bro. Really? It had a fucking premiere time. Yeah, people were running home from school just to see that. Yeah, and he, he at a time where he was already played. Yeah. You know? Yeah. People still glued to the TVs to watch that shit. Bro, remember he was winning all the awards. It's crazy. He won every American <laughs> Music Award, bro. Yeah, it's crazy. He was dude. killing it. Son. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. I don't it's know. Crazy. I hey, mean, I was a Hammer yeah. fan, bro. I'm not. Hey, listen. I like the first record, bro. Can't touch this. Yeah. All that shit, bro. Like, that shit was. That shit was. It was fire, bro. I like the first record a lot. The, yeah, that's right. Let's get it started. Yeah, let's get it started. It was a cool record. It was a good record. But yeah, you can't touch this. I bought it. Hey, I dug. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I dug. Have you seen her? <laughs> yeah, of course you did, bro. Well, you, you like that doo wop, bro? Yeah, oh, that's, that's, that's what yeah. I'm all about, bro. I'm what? all about that R and B. Yeah, the funky head hunter, bro. Yeah, he was just like <laughs> <laughs> well, they were playing that shit at Raider games until the last game, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know. Hey, have, and, but his son is his son is trying to do some things. Yeah. Cause he uh he did a video in at the, at the stadium. Oh shit! Yeah, he did That's a right. v- video at the stadium with That's fucking A's jacket and a Raiders yeah, yeah, jacket yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So shout out Hammer man, man, no love lost, dog. It was crazy no when, when Too Short was coming up, right? Mm-hmm. I, can, I can go on about Too Short, but oh, yeah. sticking to the the story, <clears throat> when he was coming up, um, he finally kind of broke through, and he was at a time where he needed to grow. Yeah, and at all, all levels, and first and foremost is the studio, right? Mm-hmm. When you're the artist, it's all about having that 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 proper studio time and that producer. And so when when he came to that fork in the road, his manager was like had been getting invited to Hammer Studio with his producer, okay, and giving him the tour because they wanted to bring him in. And his manager was like, "Oh, you know, Hammer's can't watch us over there. You know, we get down there, we got studio time. Like, studio's legit. This and that." Too short fired his fucking manager, bro. <laughs> and hired Aunt Banks, which is the best thing he could ever do. <laughs> Aunt Banks, bro. Because that was a match made in heaven. Hell yeah. And then eventually QD3 produced Get In Where You Fit In, which is Quincy Jones' son. Yeah. And that's a beautiful Too Short album. That's yeah. my favorite Too Short album. Get In Where You Fit In is a classic. Yeah, that's a great bro. album. That's dude. a classic. Yeah, son. You can ride to that. Hell yeah. But back to Kendrick Lamar, every album, a concept album from a, a story from start to finish, all of them, except for Section 80. Which is a journey in its own right. But, yeah, yeah. Well, I just took a road trip like out a few months ago. Uh, well, not a big one, but, but bro. But Section Eighty holds, fuck, dude. holds, so that holds its own. Bro. My ladies always hear me talk about Kendrick, and he, she don't quite understand him because she's only heard bits and pieces. You kind of have to accept him as a, a whole work of art, in yeah. my opinion, to yeah. really appreciate it. And you got to listen. Can't have it on in the background. Nah, nah, in the nah. background, it's going to sound like contemporary music. And if you're uh, like a, a purist, you you won't like it until you give it to its proper due. Yeah. So we we went on that, and I put on Section Eighty, and uh, we just 
usually if I have a song that I really like and I'll turn it up, yeah. that's when my lady starts talking. <clears throat> and, and all respect to my lady, yeah. but like I, I hate that shit. <laughs> and, and a lot of people do it. I'm not putting it all on her. Like a lot of people do that. But if I turn a song up, that's your cue to like I want to hear this one. Yeah, if I turn the music up, it's a fucking sign that I want yeah. to really listen. And, and I want you to fucking listen. To yeah, it. you need to hear this shit. You need to listen to this shit. But I put that album on, bro. We didn't say a fucking word. Mm-hmm. We we were just in it, bro. Mm-hmm. And when it ended, she was just like, "Wow, mm-hmm. like I get what you're saying now. That was fucking amazing. Like this this dude is amazing." And I was like, "Yeah, he is, bro." And 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 a lot of motherfuckers they they try to fucking you know talk shit about him. There's a lot of hip hop motherfuckers, old school motherfuckers. I think fucking Shane, fuck that motherfucker was trying to, trying to talk some shit, bro. You know, and game. I think game actually fucking was like, yo, game just trying to stay relevant. Keep, game, no game, no game. Game is is the is the is the motherfucker, bro. Let I me like just say game. this. Let me say this about yeah. game. He's back. Game, game put Kendrick on. Okay, so game was the first motherfucker to put Kendrick on for real on the album. He put him on his record. He didn't try to sign him. He was just trying to get motherfucker noticed. Mm-hmm. Games that motherfucker he puts on a lot of people. He put yeah. on Nipsey. Yeah. He put on fucking Kendrick. Yeah. Right. And and he's all about love for his for his fucking people from his from his city from L A. So game is he's a real motherfucker, bro. Like he, and he'll he'll throw down on some shit. But when fucking um when what's him, which one, uh what's his name from fucking uh he used to be on Bad Boy. Um, Mace? No, 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 no. Oh. Um, the fuck was his name? Bro? Craig Mack? No, 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 no. <laughs> now he's like fucking a Hebrew, Hebrew Jew. Fucking like he's got. <laughs> I don't know who you're talking about, <laughs> so, bro. Dude, he he started talking shit about Kendrick. Oh shit! And game fucking game was cool with him. Game was like, yeah, keep that motherfucker's name out your mouth. Yeah. Like I'm cool with you, dog. You're a fucking you're you're OG, but now. Nah. Mm. That shit don't fly. Mm. This motherfucker is for real, because a lot of people hated on him because he started getting that recognition right away. Yeah, people started fucking f- fucking with Kendrick right away, mm-hmm. and people like to say that Kendrick don't say shit. He's just fucking saying a whole lot of words. It doesn't no, mean nothing. No, he's saying, but no, saying. that's because you guys are fucking tuning out. You guys are tuning out. You're missing it. You're hating on him, and you're not paying attention to what he's actually yeah. saying. It's, right? work, it's too much work for you. Yeah, it it is that, and that's really what it comes down to. Yeah, it's too much work to fucking get to get the message. Yeah, because he's working on that kind of a level. He's above your. He is, bro. He's working above your head. Yeah. So you need to go read a fucking dictionary and then come back. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you need to do some come homework. back. Yeah. Come back after you read the dictionary and you learn some new words. Come back and listen to some Kendrick. Yeah. Because he's gonna fucking hit you in the face and mm-hmm. you're like, oh, okay. Oh, I didn't know you were talking about that shit. Yeah. Kendrick's that guy, man. He's 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 working on that higher plane, bro. Kung Fu Kenny, son. Kung Fu Kenny. Kung Fu Kenny, son. In fact, I'll give you guys some homework. If you don't believe me, all right, go listen to, go, pull up the album Damn, mm-hmm. and listen to the song Feel. It's track five. Mm-hmm. Just listen to that song, bro. Yeah. That shit makes me cry, bro. Yeah. I mean, goosebumps. Not cry, but like, I get in my feelings. You yeah, know what I mean, and it's titled correctly. Yeah, right. It is. He don't try to hide shit. No, I feel like uh, Kendrick is uh, the type of musician that I am a fucking artist. Okay, yeah. Where I don't, he I don't, don't try to hide shit. There's yeah. no secret. What I'm trying to say. Yeah. And I'm going to f- tell you what I feel. And you don't paint unless you got something to paint about. Yeah. And he don't rap unless he got something to talk about. There you go. You know what I mean? That's why it takes so long to get there an album. Go. And I'm, no, I'm not comparing myself to Kendrick. Okay. This is I will. Because okay. I think that was a very good comparison. And uh, that, that's I why just, his albums are. Some shit that's why his albums are fucking bulletproof. And that's why your pieces are bulletproof. appreciate that, though. And you need to get them out there, bro. I do. Yeah. I need to get some more out. That's, I'm going to tag you. You're going to. We're going to do that mural, bro. Oh, yeah. You heard it here first, y'all. Mm-hmm. About to fuck up some walls. <laughs> yeah. And then fuck up some walls. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, another great Kendra track to Pimple Butterfly. To Pimple Butterfly, bro. If these walls could talk. If these walls could talk. I mean, that song is about pussy. If so these walls could talk. You'll like that. 
Yeah, sex. <laughs> <laughs> sex. Bam, bam. Hey, that's a jam right there, bro. It's such a groove, bro. Mm-hmm. That's a groove right there. Da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah, that's a groove, bro. Fuck yeah. We losing motherfuckers over here. Y'all motherfuckers falling asleep and shit. Well, it's late for most people, and it's late here. And it's some bullshit. And we're off topic, which is my favorite place to be. This is our favorite place to be. Guess, guess <clears throat> what? Guess what? Okay. There's more of this. Mm-hmm. We will be bringing the crow's nest back. We will be bringing other ventures back, or new ventures, to the forefront. Um, you know, just gotta hang out, son. Yeah. You know what? I gotta be honest. Like, there, there's been like a few weeks, you know, where I'm like craving to get on the air here and do this show. There's really not a lot to talk about. Like, we we've done the greatest raider of all time, things like that to kind of keep the off season going. Mm-hmm. But uh, like, no fucking around. Like, <clears throat> if you're free on a Sunday. And uh, you know we ain't, we don't have any talk about pillaging pot. Let's just do that crow's nest, bro. Let's just let's do a crow's nest, bro. Off the cuff, like we don't need to plan shit. Let's just do it. Let's so let's just say this right now on the, air. The people want it, bro. Because and I want it. Because I because I, mean, I don't know how much news we're gonna get so from fun. here to next fucking weekend. So let's just do a crow's nest next weekend. Is okay. That fair? Yeah. No. Well, next week is Mother's Day. I'll be oh, like, that's true. Well, I I should be back Sunday. So check in with me on that. We can m- maybe make that but happen. But Sunday is Mother's Day. Yeah, but we're celebrating Saturday because I got to oh, go okay. out of town. So, um, well, doing a big blowout. That, that might not work for me, though. We'll that be might a, not work for yeah, me. Yeah. I didn't even think about it. Well, maybe the weekend after that. Weekend after. Mm-hmm. Let's put on that. Mm-hmm. Let's put on that. Weekend after. Weekend after. Two weeks. Crow's nest. You're going to get a crow's nest. We're going to get weird. You're going to get a whole lot of this weird shit. I think we're going to put it on this feed, too. We're going to put it on this feed. Yeah. Y'all, y'all going to get excited. You're going to be like, a Pillage Podcast. No. No. It's not. It's not. This is got a, a lot of beer drinking. Mm-hmm. A lot of shit talking. Mm-hmm. Bobby Wasabi should be back. Yeah. So it'll be good. We should do it on, on camera. Of course. Yeah. I didn't think anything less. Yeah. We'll just turn the lights down low. We'll get yeah. weird. Turn off the lights. We'll just green screen. We'll fucking. And light a candle. <laughs> 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 Teddy P, turn them off. Put a candle in the window. <laughs> as long as I can see the light. <laughs> <laughs> it's our way of saying goodnight. Got that old traveling bone. That's my funeral song, bro. Oh, shit. That Don't cre- say that shit, <laughs> son. Why? You got him a plan. Damn. Got him a plan. It's too soon. It's either that one or the wind cries Mary, but I think it's uh, too soon, bro. I'll I'll let you know mm-hmm. what my funeral song is when I'm fucking eighty five. Hey, hey, I just okay. want you to know before it happens, bro. I'm just telling you. You know, I don't plan to go before eighty five. So, <clears throat> okay, uh, I'm just letting you know. Yeah, letting so, you know. I'm strong willed, son. I gotta say though, I'm strong willed. A lot of people like the crows since we put it out. Not a lot of people listen. You better, y'all better tune in because the next one's good. we got a lot of shit to say, bro. Oh man, we gonna fucking talk some shit. Yeah, talk some shit. Yup. There's been a lot of shit going on too. There's been a lot of shit going on. I got a lot of opinions about. We do. Yeah. We're well, very opinionated. Like this whole, whole this that. whole Amber Heard thing's gonna be cold oh, by the time shit. we do it. But that would have been a great episode. <laughs> it would have been. You know what I mean? It would have been. <laughs> Uh, that shit's been crazy though. <laughs> Dog, bro. <laughs> Fucking A, bro. Uh, anyway. Amber heard. Hey, bro. You, guys you heard? <laughs> you heard on a you're the elf on the shelf? <laughs> <laughs> heard on the third, bro. <laughs> Everybody's seen that meme. I've seen like forty different versions of that meme, bro. <laughs> Fucking twenty one dump street. Let's, oh, let's go, bro. <laughs> let's go, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've been seeing the little snippets from the fucking court, yeah. Right, She's and they're like, and they play like a sound bite, and it's fucking her fucking <laughs> telling Johnny, "What are you gonna say, Johnny? Are you gonna say that you are a victim of domestic violence?" And then you hear Johnny Depp go, "Yes." <laughs> He's like, "You say you, a man, are a victim of domestic violence? What do you think they're gonna say, Johnny?" <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And then they fucking cut off the tape. What you, uh, Mr. What you- Depp. Uh, what did you? What was your response when she said, "Are you going to say you're a victim of domestic violence, Johnny?" He's like, "I said, I, I said yes, <laughs> yes, I am." <laughs> so this will be the time, crazy bitch, bro. That you almost caught Jack Sparrow. Hey, hey, I don't call all ladies bitches, but that's a crazy bitch right there. This is bro. crazy. Boy. That's just crazy, yeah. son. 
Come it, on now. Yeah, it was good. Well, ladies, can, uh, women, y'all, y'all can call her the same, man. Come mm-hmm. on now. Oh yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a lot of women to be uh, oh, that my, will agree with me. Yeah, oh my lady would be one of them. Hey, bro. we having some good laughs, bro. But you got anything else to say? <sighs> no. Go, go Raiders, though. Go Raiders. I think this draft class gets one one more win. Minimum. Hey, minimum. I like that. I like that. See. We were in the group chat. Mm-hmm. Kenny was there was a little bit of a uh, not ne- not negative Kenny, mm-hmm. not negative Kenny, skeptical, but skeptical Kenny, mm-hmm. right? I and, I was, and, growling, and, then, and then I and then I had a, and then I had to put you put you on like a little reminder, like mm-hmm. yo, listen, bro, get the wheels turning. All these motherfuckers that were on the, our old line was like fucking fresh. This is the first time they most most of most motherfuckers were starting this mm-hmm. season. They got to get better. And you were like. You know what, Chet? You're fucking right. Goddamn. You're fucking right, son. you goddamn right. You ease my mind, son. And I think hey. uh, this is the first time in a long time that we're not going to have a whole bunch of distractions, hopefully. Knock on wood. <laughs> oh, but it seems shit. like we're kind of buttoned I mean, up now. You know what I mean? Right here. I don't even, uh, this is particle this is board. Formica, bro. This is particle board. This, uh, is, this is wood over here. The, right. the window frame, bro. Um, you gotta come over here and hit this shit <laughs> Cause I don't wanna fuck, with, fuck up this fucking good good mojo son But you feel me like, I feel like we're kinda buttoned up You know what I mean Yeah Yeah No I, I think we're I think we are headed Where we wanna be so. Yeah And As far as the old line I expect it to come together I expect it You were drafted for a fucking reason mm-hmm. Okay Simpson Leatherwood, James, you're all on this team for a reason. We should see better out of you next season. Oh, did you see the footage of Antonio Brown performing live? Yeah, and nobody, <laughs> and nobody, <laughs> nobody excited about that shit at all. Not a single person, bro. Not a motherfucking person, bro. That was a sh- that was a shameful ass performance, bro. Zero point zero. <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> He's stupid. That motherfucker's stupid, bro. <laughs> what is he doing? What is he doing, dude? I can't even believe that guy. Hey, bro, the Panthers walked away from the Baker Mirfield train. That fool's going to be playing in the fan controlled football league with Johnny Mansell. <laughs> Do you want to see this guy on the field today? No. <laughs> Dude, those commercials. Sub him out for a running back. Those commercials dried up. They have to move from him living in that stadium to now being homeless, bro, in the commercial. <laughs> yeah, commercial All right, good dead. question. Oh, so Steve Benitez has two great questions. We got to answer those before we get out okay, of here. Okay, let's get it. Let's get it. First one was, who's your favorite pick in this draft? Farrell. Me too. Farrell. Same. Farrell, I want to say Britton Brown, but it's risky. Oh, they had, that's a hot take. Made the hot take. Yeah. Favorite pick is Farrell. Faux Farrell, show. Bro. Faux show. <laughs> no, it's just Nate Hobbs. Jesus Christ. <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> you son of a bitch. Yo, wait, wait, wait. wait. What did Nux say? He said, bro, I yelled it out at oh, the airport. Somebody said, Raiders. Okay. He said, bro, I yelled it out at the airport. This guy, he said, right on. What? Yeah, fuck that guy, bro. Fuck that guy, son. You, the proper response is Raiders. Yeah. If somebody yells Raiders at you and you are listening to this show, mm-hmm. you better fucking yell Raiders hey. back. Every time I walk outside my door and Randy's out there, Raiders. Hey, that's all. And that's what I say it right That back. is the only response. That's it. Shout That's out to it. Randy, bro. He's the most positive fucking dude I've ever met, bro. You're always hey. having a good time. I love that. Hey. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> I don't know what it is, man. I'm real phlegmy today. Um, <laughs> Allergies, bro. We next, were out there fucking yeah, throwing discs we in the were. fucking wind, son. Next question that Steve had is, what player is going to have the biggest jump next season? My answer, Samson Simpson. Samson Simpson. Because we, we need him to. Because, hey, we do. We need him to. Mm-hmm. And let's just say this. He graded out really well last season. Mm-hmm. He did. Mm-hmm. So I only see him getting better, bro. That's, I mean, that's He's only going to get better. I mean, and on that yeah. left side with Colton, yeah. he he has to get he's better. He's a good company over there. Yeah, he's got, he got Big Brother over mm-hmm. there. 
right? Mm-hmm. Colton's the veteran on this line now, bro. Mm-hmm. He's the motherfucking veteran. Mm-hmm. So he's got Big Brother on his side. You know what I mean? And a solid motherfucker on who, that side. Who else, though? Who's the corner I'm thinking of? Who's the corner I'm thinking of? Um, I don't know. A meek? Not a meek. It won't be a meek. Mullins? Maybe Mullen. I don't know. I think Mullen is who he is. I think he'll get better, but I think he'll still he'll be the same guy, right? Like we know his skill set. I don't think that changes. Um it's not Nate Hobbs. Although I like Nate Hobbs. Um Yeah, maybe maybe I don't know. But I think uh Samson Simpson. Cause who else, man? Like um you know, can Connor Renfro get any better? We surely don't need him to. Right. He can roll right back out there and sing. If Hunter Renfro performs at the same fucking yeah. pace and rate that he did this last mm-hmm. season, we are good, son. Mm-hmm. We are fucking good. Okay? Mm-hmm. We don't need Hunter Renfro to do anything different than he did this last season, bro. He gave us everything. Did it? Did I see... Did we bring Phylon back? Did that happen? No. Phylon is still out there. Okay. He's still kind of in the wind, right. bro. Like he's just kind of floating out there. We're gonna get him back. Um, well, maybe not now. I I kind of hope we do sign him, mm-hmm. even if it's just the one year, mm-hmm. um, and allow him to work himself back to health, bro. Because Phylon, man, the fucking output that we got from that dude, man, he deserves a fucking like, at least a one year. And I understand, bro. He was he was on a one year. He finishes with injury. It's hard to fucking give him a fucking contract. Mm-hmm. It is. And it's not because he's not deserving of it. But these motherfuckers coming in, they're taking over this re- this team. It's a whole brand new regime. The last thing they want to do is hold on to a guy at a sentiment. Mm-hmm. Because that doesn't equal wins. Mm-hmm. Okay? That's going to get you the, oh, you guys are good guys. Oh, you but that is an yeah. equal wins. Yeah. You know, and that's a harsh thing to say because at the end of the day, you want to be able to say like, oh, we took care of that dude because he did he did right by us. Yeah. But the NFL is a fucking real harsh ass league. And if you aren't able to be fucking cutthroat, then you end up at the bottom of the league and all these fucking heartless motherfuckers end up at the top of the league. Mm-hmm. Just go ahead and look at them. Mm hmm. Go ahead and look and and see who's at the top of the league. Yeah. They're all heartless fucks. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers. They don't Rogers, give a goddamn about Aaron Rodgers, Tom wrong. Brady. You know what I'm saying? These dudes, yeah. They don't give a fuck about nobody. You, you know who it could be? Could be Divine Diablo. Ooh, I like that take. Pow. I like that take. Pow, pow. What do you think? What's your answer? <clears throat> and thank you, Steve. This is good questions, man. Hmm. Hmm. Again, we don't need Waller. We don't really need Carr to make the jump. We don't need Miller to make the jump. We need Brandon Parker to make the jump. We need Leatherwood to make the jump. I don't think they're going to be the ones. I see Leatherwood getting better, not the biggest jump. I think it's either Simpson or Diablo. I'm leaning towards Diablo because he was flashing, bro. Nate Hobbs had a good little year, though. I mean, he had his mistakes, but he made some plays. It's not going to be Abram. He's had his chance. Josh Jacobs maybe plateauing at a yeah, plateauing at a good spot mm-hmm. um somebody said andre james i don't think so andre james is a vet i think he is who he is he just needs to be solid that's all he needs to be i, I think he just needs to clean up some shit yeah. colton's he's gonna clean up some at, shit. you know colton's peaking he's on been on the rise he's not gonna make a huge jump he, uh i think he gets better i don't think he could make gets hey vastly better Brian it's Edwards. Pretty damn good. I wanted to say that, and I, I hope so. I really hope so. Brian Edwards. I like that. Brian Edwards. He's He is the motherfucker that should make the jump, mm-hmm. and he needs to make the jump. He needs to. He because needs you to. got no excuse now. We need him to. You have no excuse now. Yeah. You have Renfro. You have Adams. You have Waller. Mm-hmm. And you have a slew of fucking running backs that are going to do a whole bunch of shit out the backfield. Foster Moreau. And Foster Moreau. Yeah. There's no reason why you shouldn't be better next season. I think Foster Moreau phases out in this new system. I don't know. No? No. 
I think he's too much of. I, I, listen, I'm on record saying that Foster Moreau pro is a Bowl. Pro Bowl talent if he's not playing behind Waller. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah, how many drop passes have you seen Waller? I mean Moreau have mm-hmm. none. None. Think of a fucking play where Moreau dropped the ball. Yeah. There's zero. Anytime they throw the ball to that motherfucker, he's catching it. Mm-hmm. And it's usually a fucking really big play. Right? Um, I'm built like a pro bowler. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> like Mike Weber. <laughs> Me too, bro. Like, like PBA tour. <laughs> pro bowler. Pro bowling association. That's what I'm talking about. PCA's yeah. There you go. Pro joke. bowling. Hey, we drink a lot of beers. Got a little gut. Yeah. You know, the professional bowlers association. I'm built like a pro. And bowler. our feet are fucking delicate. So yeah. we need them fucking slippery shoes. <laughs> we need some slippery shoes. Bro. My mom beat a pro bowler. He really? Yeah. She bowled in a pro am. No shit. She pissed that dude off. He was a dude too. That's fucking he awesome. He was mad. Rich. That's she fucking awesome. Three frame. Yeah. <laughs> three, <laughs> That's fucking three dope. Yeah. That's dope. But uh, it's, it's Brian Edwards, bro. Brian Edwards needs to come up this season. Yes. If you don't. And then I have questions about your ability to actually fucking improve. If Brian Edwards does what you're saying, we have the number one offense in the NFL. Absolutely. There is no question. That's a hot take. Hot take. Kind of. Hit it. That's it. That's a hot take. That's a hot take. If we, if Brian Edwards does what he should do, and that is flourish with a whole bunch of weapons around him. Then this is a number one offense. It's a dealer's choice at that point. Absolutely, bro. Yeah. We're playing with fucking. I mean, this is the house's hand right here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But if the motherfucker fails, mm-hmm. if he falls short, mm-hmm. it's time. It's time to cut bait. It's so. time to cut bait. There's no excuses. No. There's no excuses. Mm-hmm. And if you have Devonte Adams in your camp. <laughs> Every fucking day, mm-hmm. there's absolutely no fucking reason mm. why you shouldn't be fucking stuck to his side, mm-hmm. soaking every bit of fucking knowledge that you can. Soak up the game. Just man. throwing stupid questions at him mm-hmm. all the time. And I, this is funny, but like, there's a fucking uh, interview with Michael Jordan. They were talking to him about Kobe. They're like, yo, like, what was your guys' relationship like? He's like, you know, it was like a big brother, little brother. Like, but the motherfucker was always asking me questions. Like, to the point where I was like, are you fucking serious right now? Like, why are you asking me these questions right now? Right? But Kobe was that motherfucker that wanted to know every yeah. fucking little intricacy of every fucking detail of every fucking possibility of every fucking play that you ever created and made in your fucking life. Mm-hmm. And that's why Jordan was probably like, what? This is a stupid ass question, Kobe. Why are you fucking asking me this dumb ass question? That's, how, you don't that's how you're supposed to be, Edwards. Yeah. That's, that's, you should fucking annoy the shit out of Devontae Adams by asking him so many goddamn questions. Mm-hmm. Because if you're doing that, then I know you're actually trying. That's how I am. I know at, you're working hard, bro. That's how I am at my job, bro. Yeah. My director, I get along with him. Yeah. He's a smart guy. I'm always hitting him up. That's it. You know? That's how you should be, bro. If you're you're trying to grow, if you're trying to improve, and you're trying to get to a different place Mm -hmm. than where you are, Mm -hmm. then you should be doing that. Read books up, motherfucker. That's it, man. Read your ass off. Yeah. Anyways. Hey. Great conversation. Shout out to Steve Benitez for the great questions. Absolutely, man. Next time, uh, set him with the cash donation. You know, I'm just saying. (laughs) Just kidding. Just kidding. Um, Hey. But listen, man, we've been gone for a little while. We've been gone for a while. So I'm not mad about. You've been gone. I'm not mad about. I'm not mad about, about that shit, bro. Mm-hmm. But you know what? We're going to catch some fire right here. We're going to put some fire under your asses. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, y'all, y'all motherfuckers be, be ready. Be ready. Be ready. Season's about to start. Stay ready. Nobody. I'm not boasting. Nobody does it like fucking pills. You podcast. So if you go ahead, go ahead, fucking go listen to some other podcasts, man. Do you think? The go ahead, red, try us, try us. Do you think red zone issues will be re- resolved under McDaniel's play calling? Yes, 
With Adams, maybe. <clears throat> with Foster Moreau, definitely. With every weapon plus the new addition of Adams, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Because we talked about it the last season that Edwards should be that guy that's taking advantage of the red zone opportunities with fucking Moreau and fucking Waller yeah. and fucking Renfro with yeah. his little short fucking cuts and shit. Yeah. And he didn't. Yeah. But now you have fucking Adams in the fucking mix. Yeah. Yeah. The red zone, sh- the red zone should fucking improve significantly. And you want to know why, Mr. Franklin? Because significantly. it's not going to be any more run Josh Jacobs twice and then try to force the plastic Darren Waller yeah. in double coverage. That's not your red zone. And throw it anymore. in the dirt because no one's yeah. there. It'll be a little bit more creative. You're going to have even a little bit more creative. You're going to have more success mm-hmm. because we can only go up, bro. We're like the worst in the red zone, yep. dude. Yep. From 20 yards in, we're garbage, dude. Between the between the 20s, we're like the best. Yeah. But, but yeah, no, it can only go up. You know, if not, then I'm going to punch Josh McDonald's in the face. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I don't know what it is, but yeah. You just got that fucking <laughs> look on your face. It makes me want to punch it. You want to punch me in the face right now? <laughs> don't make me download that soundbite, bro, from the Step Brothers, bro. Go ahead, do it. <laughs> punch me in the face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, shout out to John C. Riley in Winning Time. That fool is hey, bro. crushing <laughs> it, dude. You can dispute the facts of that show, but it is entertaining. But as it's fuck, it, entertaining. Bro. John C. Riley is never fun to watch, bro. He's never not fun to watch. Bro. And, and I love that he got his dramatic chops like early, and now he's just having a great time. He deserves an Emmy for that show. John John C. Riley is. Hot take, one of the greatest actors of our time, bro. I don't go, disagree. Go, go watch Gangs of New York, bro. Yeah. yeah yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Boogie Nights. And Boogie Nights, bro. Yep. He's badass, dude. John C. John C. Riley's is awesome, badass, bro. Dude. But now he's just living life on that comedy yeah. side of, of things, bro. It's fucking beautiful. It's for your health. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet Barry Wine. <laughs> Hey, oh, that's it for this week's show. Tune in every week wherever podcasts are found. And until next week, keep the wind in your sails and the rum in your mug. And pillage on, Raider Nation. This has been a production of the Crow's Nest Podcast Network. I'm Kenny Staple, joined as always by your boy, Che. And we out here. Peace. Raiders. Raiders.